Okay, here's my problem. So we have this Equality Act, right? Which it's like, basically, if you look through it, it's amending the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Like it just goes through section by section plus extra stuff like Title II and stuff like that. Um, but it goes through and yeah, so Civil Rights Act 1964 and uh, adds gender identity into everything. So when it says like race, creed, color, it's like gender identity, right? That's How well did the 1964 Civil Rights Act work out for black people in this country? Uh-oh. <laughs> All right, this is a great question though. This is a great question. Can we start the podcast with this? Yeah. Sure. All right, kick us off, Jake. No, that we just started. <laughs> So, okay, <laughs> here's my question though, is, all right, so we're, we're saying in order to change things, we have to change the laws, but you're bringing up a really great point of like, okay, well, laws were changed in 1964, uh, but yet a lot of people feel that there's, well, there is still inequality. I wouldn't say it's right. just based on race. Mm-hmm. I would say it's based on class. It's a caste system that we have here. Um, but there is still very much inequality. I would say also that the Civil Rights Act didn't address that at all. Um, it did address discrimination based on the color of someone's skin, um, also based on uh, their sex. But like how much they have, or like <laughs> how much sex they have. That's, That's probably the funniest thing you've ever said. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's on their favorite position. Do you have like a punch card? I remember <laughs> I six? remember I heard this one time when I was young, right? And I was going to I don't remember what I was going for. I don't know, like chiropractic. Gotta get was young. And it was like it was like it was like, you know, age, address, sex, and I was like, none yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so for you the last one to lose their virginity here. Hundred percent. What's like there's such a thing <laughs> but didn't you say sex like sex is gender right so i haven't had gender yet like i didn't make gender so i haven't chosen how many times have you had gender have you chose your uh but gender identity yet not yet not yet for context just real quick because i don't know where we're going to start right. this we're talking about the equality act which is a bill sitting in the senate right now which joe biden just i don't know if he just said it or what but he said he would get it passed in the first 100 days in this extremely unlikely event that he were to be actually become president. Um, but that's, that's what we're talking about because basically we just, I just read through it. It's just inserting the word gender identity into everything in the government having to do with rights. Like when it says color, sex, et cetera, it's adding gender identity and sexual orientation. No, everything. I think you were just, ref- when you did read that be- probably before this podcast, uh, I think you were just referring to the amended part or were you referring to the entire act? That's the entire no, act. Well, what I was reading earlier was, it's like when you write a legal document, like a law or, or, or like just like, let's say a contract between two parties. Normally what you do in the beginning is you state the reasons why sort of you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Not you don't have to, I don't think necessarily, but that's usually what you do. It's like, since you're a person who supplies X product and I'm a person who's looking for a buyer of X product, we've decided to form this agreement kind of thing. That's so beneficial, yeah. mm-hmm. it's like the beginning of the act explains, it says findings and purpose. So they're giving all of the selling points as to why something like this is necessary. And mostly what it comes down to is they're saying that LGBTQ people are discriminated against in a lot of ways and also women. And so I feel so discriminated against. You, yeah, you look discriminated against. I don't know how, but I can tell. Well, <laughs> I like because Mitchell was saying uh, the the book that you're reading. It's all about outrage culture. It's like if you're not outraged, then like you're not doing it right. Like you're supposed to remain with an yeah. anger. So just do this real quick. There you go. There you go. That that makes more sense. That's who you're supposed to be, right? It's like if Wait, you're what did you say? I, I missed it. What did you have her do? <laughs> he just, just had just her, be angry. her bra. Oh, okay. Just be angry, right? So, okay. Uh, <laughs> so the the question is, all right, we're saying we need to change the laws if we're going to change things in the system for real. But what has changing the laws done 
thus far for people. And then a uh, follow-up question maybe for later, definitely for later. Uh, let's say worst case scenario, Biden does somehow win. What is our responsibility within that? So let's start, I guess, first with the changing of the laws and then we can move on to that one. Yeah. yeah. It, some, I don't know who it was. I think it was you, Mitch, or somebody made this point though. Like there, or it was asked if like they're actually changing the laws. So when we talk about that, like we have to go and change the laws. Like this is where the stuff happens. So you have a lot of people up to that point, like making a bunch of noise. And then eventually somehow the laws get changed. But when you look at the actual laws, it's a whole bill. And I'm looking at it right now. You could go look it up. It's it's uh, HR5 of the 116th Congress. HR5, so they've only had five in this first session. When did the session start? I don't even know. This was introduced in May 20th. So I don't know, maybe it's the beginning of the session or something. But the point is, um, all it really is is just adding in the word sexual orientation, gender identity into all the civil rights stuff. That's, I mean, I'm looking at this. It. I thought for sure it was going to be like, okay, they're going to say some things that's going to help people. Don't they already say all, all genders? Like, why do they have to add in gender identity? If they because, say all because that's not, I guess, specific enough to you being able to, I, to choose it. And I know people I'm are going to say, well, you don't it. choose your gender. That's yeah. interesting because it's it's a gender identity that it's like you're expecting, like that's a whole point is like you're expecting that child to tell you what gender they are. They're choosing it. And you know what the fuck gender they are. <laughs> why are you why are you playing this game? But you there's know? it's like being presented in a way where it's I mean, okay, if I if I'm not being snarky about it, it's the argument that you're the sum total whoa, 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 of whoa, all whoa, of your whoa, whoa, whoa. You say you're not going to be snarky about it? Okay, wait, everybody, focus, focus, focus up. Okay, go ahead. I mean, I'm not, kind of, I'm not trying to make a caricature out of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the argument that you're the sum total of all of the programming inside of you, and you can't change that. Mm -hmm. So since I can't change it, which is the theory, I am essentially a victim to that. And therefore, if you don't adjust society to accommodate for this, then I am now being victimized society. And the purpose of government is to protect everybody from being basically what? Like victimized or by we the world or something. You know, I mean, that's one way of looking at it anyways, right? So it, it makes sense from that context, but th there's no discussion. In fact, it's almost like, a, I guess you can call it a taboo, but I think people would say it's borderline, bordering, if not full out hate, hate speech to right. say that, no, you can change that. Mm -hmm. and, and I mean, maybe to a large degree, people, like if somebody's transgender right now, just given what normal, the average person understands, like they're probably not going to be able to change well, it. So, well, you know, um, you posted uh, this, <clears throat> your disagreement to this tweet of somebody saying, I'm a, a a pedophile and it's okay because that's just that's a natural expression of the human yeah they're um, like it's just one of the many sexualities exactly right and i was looking at maybe, maybe i googled it because they didn't use the word pedophile they used it it was word. like it was like napiophile or something yeah, ne ne there's all kinds of different ones right and it was i think the specific one was like infants and it was like infants and on their twitter, on. I, looked at, I had to look it up on their twitter profile it said that they were like a school teacher yeah. yeah, I don't know if that was fake or not. I thought it was. It could have been fake, but um, but so I. But, but the fact that other people were defending it in itself is a problem. Like it's not like, right. even if it's fake. Um, so I, I googled it right because I didn't know what a nepia file was, and I found uh, you know on Reddit there was somebody saying you know I'm a nepia file. Uh, what what should I do? Like, is this something that you can change? And so going back to what you were just saying about you know if you were to say can you change it that alone is like sorry that you can change it that it's kind of like hate speech and how's my mic volume is that good you're good you're good cool <laughs> for the first time um and they said no you can't change it they already proved that the electroshock therapy doesn't work so just get chemical castrate castration so the point is when people think change 
Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. wait. He said, solution. no, you can't change it because they've already proved electroshock therapy. So if electroshock therapy does For homosexual, exactly. Exactly. Nothing, that, nothing else will work. So might as Cameron well just jump that, to chemical castration. Exactly. Because when Cameron said that, you know, it's almost hate speech to say you can change it is because you're basically saying go electrocute them until they go get force it. them exactly. against their exactly. will, which is yeah. not at all what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Wow. And so that's the, the thing is, it, people and people on the other side too, right? It's the people who also are like, transgender is evil and the Bible and the Quran said this is the end times because there's transgender people, all that stuff. That person doesn't know how to change either. Right. They don't know how to support anybody to change, so they're just going to fight it. If you have to say you shouldn't be gay because the Bible said so, it's like, You're definitely- that's like... <laughs> That'd be like trying to justify something because an algebra book said it. It's like, who cares what the book said? Like, use your own common sense. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah, And it's not that it's not, I'm not even saying people shouldn't be gay. That's not, that's not the point. (laughs) Not at all. Yeah. It's, it's that. It's like, we're trying to adjust reality to accommodate for something. That's what we think we're doing. That's what we think we're doing. But what in reality is happening is there are groups who know what they're doing and they're deliberately trying to insert things so that they become more widely accepted so that the basic internal structures of our society don't work and that creates more suffering so people become more dependent upon those very same people to to provide for them. Right. That doesn't mean that gay people are weak. That's not what I'm saying. Or what I'm saying is If a child is going to get the best support, they need to have two parents. Ideally, it should be their biological parents because their biological, and I said this before on this podcast several times, the biological parents have given them their mind consciousness system. So that child is an embodiment of these two parents coming together. They're in the best position to support them. Also part of that in the ideal scenario is the parents need to be supporting themselves walking the tools that we're talking about. So I'm not just talking about some fucking random straight white hillbilly dumb fucks, you know, who live in a fucking trailer. And I'm like, those are better than these two people who are gay, who are like very well educated, common sense, you know, very supportive people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, whether these two guys want to have sex and all that stuff, what does that fucking matter? Now, then you have to look at, though, the point of when if you're gay, where does that come from? Because you can make every kind of natural based argument you want, right? Of, well, there's gay animals in nature and all that stuff. Okay, that aside, let me ask you a question. What's the purpose of sex? Procreate. Reproduce. Technically to reproduce, to procreate. That is the point. Now, aren't there some nice side benefits of it? Pleasure. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Just like eating, what's the purpose of eating? Yeah, to feel your body, but it's. But if somebody was like, "I don't care about that. I just want to eat to feel good," that's, and this feels good to me. I, I dude, I watched this. Uh, did you guys see that video? I don't know if I posted it. I was like, got on some random YouTube loop one time, and it was this this it was this girl. She was like, I don't know how much she weighed, probably like four hundred pounds, and she ate uh, sofa mattress foam. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> Go watch. It's insane. Like, and she's it. like, she's like, she's like, she's like going into her mom's bedroom or whatever, like ripping pieces off and like sneaking it and like eating it. She had to go to the doctor. Like a mattress were, like, or a sofa. It was something like that. Right? It, was it, was it was a mattress. It was like a yeah. foam mattress. <laughs> Big difference, she right? <laughs> and she had yeah. already eaten like nine mattresses or something in her whole life. It was wow. like insane. And, and it was so interesting when you watch it, cause you could see it went back to this point. She talked about when she was in the car and she, I don't remember why, but she ate some of the foam and it was like a comfort thing. And it's like, I could instantly see there was some kind of trauma going on. She was comforting herself. It became linked to that point. It's very obvious. So it's a dysfunction. Now you look at that person and you go, that's who they are. You shouldn't judge them. Okay. You shouldn't judge them. Like, I'm not going to sit around thinking about how dumb they are for doing it. What's the point? So yeah, don't judge them. But then look at the behavior. Is that effective behavior? Like, no. why shouldn't we make a judgment and say, that's not best for this person? It's like my strange addictions. There's exactly. A whole show dedicated to that. Exactly. Right. So how, how are those addictions actually fundamentally supporting those people? It isn't. It's just a coping mechanism for what's not 
working properly. And that's what all of these things that we see in society is, these behaviors such as pedophilia and things like this, like that's just a coping mechanism for something not functioning correctly for this individual, whether it is a passed on trauma or an individual trauma that they've experienced within their lifetime. It doesn't matter what it is. What matters is that you can take responsibility of these things and you don't have to accept them as reality. You don't have to accept them as a norm. These coping mechanisms are not actually fundamentally supporting life, human life, nature, animals. Like this is not supporting the earth. We are actually just doing, wreaking havoc on the earth and those around us. We aren't, we're just, we don't want to take full responsibility. We don't want to have to go through the work to do that. And so we're going to live on through these coping mechanisms and not accept that you can do anything about these things and that these coping mechanisms aren't coping mechanisms. It's just who I am. And now it's to the point where it's like shameful and you can get social shame for even standing up and standing for something like, hey, that is not best to be a nepiophile or pedo pedophile or whatever. <laughs> and, and like we were talking about this earlier. I mean, Jess and I are going to have kids in the next few years. Like imagine for yourself having a daughter and now there's some laws in place saying oh well if, if you identify as a woman you can you know use the same locker room or restroom or whatever like do you realize what's going to happen with that imagine you have a daughter or your niece or whatever that you care about and now some dude can just identify as a woman and go into that bathroom mm -hmm. like do you not see what's happening <laughs> no because pedophilia is okay so exactly. if it's my daughter then you know maybe she'll like when, it when when did you submit your application to work at netflix <laughs> <laughs> you know i was just reading uh that in century of the self right edward bernays is responsible for in my opinion like one of the greatest manipulations of all time bringing people to buy what they want instead of what they need right and getting you know, all women to start pick up smoking, not all women, but getting women to pick up smoking. Um, <clears throat> he was a relative of Sigmund Freud. The co-founder of Netflix is a relative of Bernays. That's right. No way. I didn't know yeah. that. Yeah. That makes it's sense. Like Reed Hastings or something like that. Uh, uh, not that Or is one. it one of the other guys? Yeah, it's, it's one, one of the other guys. other guys. Okay. Okay. Got it yeah. in that DNA. It's, That's it's, crazy. It's, I didn't know that. His, his middle name. Name. Yeah, there it is. His, and his huh? middle name is Bernays. What's his name, Asif? Mark Randolph. His yeah. middle name is Bernays. That's great. yeah, Mark Bernays oh, Randolph. Shit. And like his father's middle name is Bernays. And like, can you imagine if Edward Bernays thought of Netflix? He'd be like, oh yeah. <laughs> he would have been like, oh, yeah. <laughs> They're gonna go next Netflix and chill with myself right now. This is gonna be. <laughs> so if you guys want to know who Edward Bernays is, if you don't watch at least the first part of Century of the South, and you'll be like, holy fuck, that yeah. shit is crazy. So, um. On one of Jessica's posts, there was somebody who was commenting who was very against what she was saying. Oh, which one? Yeah, which one? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, be I'll, I'll be honest. Let I don't me even... count the ways. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really remember the details, but um, I think it was what is mansplaining. I think it was that one. But oh. the, that that part isn't even important that, because there was one person who was disagreeing, and then you were making a point of. Oh no no no! It was the angry angry uh, women. I think that was Mitch's exactly. post. Exactly, it was Mitchell's but post. But then, yeah, yeah. And Jessica's commenting on it. Yeah, thank you for putting it. So you were saying, you know, well, which by the way, episode what was it, twenty? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was our episode right. title, right? Right. Exactly. Weak men, angry women. Yeah. <clears throat> so Jessica was saying, so somebody was like opposing it, and Jessica made a good point, and then she said, "You you may be surrounded by weak men." Somebody else jumped in and said, "Well, how could you say something like that? Like, didn't you consider that?" You didn't, you, like, you didn't realize that her father passed away when she was very young. And, you know, it, it wasn't like, you know, so now she's spending her life trying to make sure that her kids don't have to go through that. Um, the, the problem is that. Like, how would that not have created a trauma in somebody if you were very, very young and your father passed away? Yeah. And now you're saying, hey, that may have created a problem. Uh, we have tools to support you in working through that so you can take responsibility and make sure you don't have to go through that, but you'll get put on the cross for it. Right. And that's what Cameron was saying. It's like Cameron saying, you know, it would be best 
if two biological parents raised, you know, their child. That's coming from somebody who didn't even have that. Think about that, right? Like, Cameron, you didn't have that, right? Yeah, and it's but not it's in like, the beginning, yeah. Exactly, right? And so it's like, but you understand that that fucked you up in different ways and you're taking responsibility for that. Yeah, so totally. Nobody can use that as like, you're being so insensitive for people don't that didn't have that. It's like, uh, like- And someone tried to do that again today on a comment that I was sent on Facebook where they were like, something about, you know, they grew up in poverty. And so therefore they know about blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, so did I, like my mom didn't even graduate high school. Like, yeah. I used to tell what's us your the, point. The cockroaches, you know? the size of the cockroaches. Yeah. They used yeah to fly. Like flying cockroaches around my house. Right. Exactly. Right. It's, um, it's like, it's like, um, they're people are just nitpicking. It's that outrage culture again of like, yeah. well, damn you because right. whatever, you're being insensitive but, but it's also I, like hiding behind it it's like a way of, it's like a shield a victim shield so you can just be irrational yeah 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 yeah, and, yeah for two seconds and then go and not take responsibility of any other part of your life and go jerk off to watching netflix and go to fantasy land when you go play dungeons and dragons and not worry about your life and just every once in a while making a stand on a post on facebook or maybe you even work in the political system. Yeah, you go to your job and you say that you're doing something, but really, are you? Are you fundamentally changing your life? Are you taking responsibility of the things that you've accepted allowed in your own life? No. So then how would changing any of the laws even make any sense if you haven't even looked at your own life? No, and, and it, when they talk about changing the laws, what is the actual result of it, right? So they're like, have you thought about Joe changing the laws about this and poverty and everything? It's like, okay, let's look at it for a moment. The Civil Rights Act of 1964, did it make li- black people equal to everybody else? No. I mean, you were allowed I mean, to- a co- Not according to like everybody just, right now. The way everybody's like, looking at where they're at, where black right. people are at, from that, based off that result, fuck no. According to- the left, if you want to call According it that. According to how everybody the feels. Because right? yeah. the point of putting these things into policy right now is so people feel included, right? So if we're using that as the measurement, well, then that bill didn't have any fucking effect. Because right. now things are worse more than ever. Right. Apparently. Yeah. right? And also, Apparently. how did it ever way. address the biggest problem, which is the inequality of vocabulary? Hmm. I mean, how did it address that in any way whatsoever? It. What's funny about it is they people will use like the whole white supremacy and, and, and systemic racism and all this stuff as a reason why, for example, black people um, are at a disadvantage in, in the United States. But if, if you understand how vocabulary works and how environment works, and that was never addressed, and all you did was say, no, you can't discriminate against people. How did that ever actually level the playing field for everybody? And so what you're actually buying into is if we just give everybody an equal opportunity, then we can all just compete and then eventually it'll all be equal. But even in that scenario, isn't there still going to be poverty? Mm-hmm. <laughs> isn't it like, isn't there still going to be poverty? Because you're just saying you don't like the fact that it disproportionately affects black people. So you don't like the fact that if you're born in this world and you have black it's not even black, but you know what I'm saying? Dark skin, that you're more likely to be on the losing side of, of this, of the system. Okay. So what if we created it through laws somehow that it's equally likely, no matter what race that you're on the losing system on the losing end, how is that acceptable? Exactly. So it's still the losing. And, and, and the point being that, well, somebody might say, well, of course, then we can address that. But the way it's being addressed right now is <laughs> not addressing that at all. It's artificially yeah. trying to make it look like no one's at a disadvantage based on some arbitrary physical characteristics, but it doesn't even accomplish that. Because the, 19, the, the, the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was put into place. And if you go back and look at the numbers, there was more, there were more fathers in the homes of the black families then than there are now. Yeah. So how did it help? And then they're complaining that LGBTQ youth and people of color and everything are disadvantaged. And it's like, those are all the people who are not in the nuclear families, who are not, you know, 
it, it's like they're all just going into like the identity and emotion and all these other points and then still trying to say that oh people over here are not doing enough but the simple thing that we're not doing enough of is just making sure everybody has what they need like think about this if everybody let's just say we eliminated um well, actually not even that if a, if a black child grows up in poverty why is that worse than a white child who grows up in poverty it's not if a if a black trans gay child grows up in poverty why is that worse than if it's a straight i probably wouldn't be a straight when they're a child but you know what i'm saying like a straight white child growing up in poverty why is that worse I think if, if the if the police kill some white kid or non-white but i'm using that as an example because that's the one everyone thinks that nothing ever bad happens to you when you're white you know so okay if that if a, if a white person dies why is that less important than if a black person dies it only is important if you think of a black person as somehow like just so low and like just so helpless do you know what i mean yeah it's like when you look at people and you see someone who's black or whatever and you're like wow you just have it so hard and like because of what you are you're just at such a disadvantage in this reality and so if that is your starting point and then you try to change laws based on that all you're going to do is try to make things appear like this person isn't hurt and isn't at a disadvantage but if because if you're if the solution was actually going to help everybody or this person in particular, wouldn't it just be make sure that there's no such thing as poverty anymore? Because then how could that person ever be a disadvantage? Like if, if everyone had enough money, if everyone had enough food, shelter, all the best things, if everyone had all of that as a blanket kind of basic point across, across the board, how would a white person, let's say, put a black person or a transgender person or whatever at a disadvantage? How? It would only be an emotional thing. Like, like what would be an example? I'm just saying like, as, as far as the only discrimination that would exist would be like an emotional discrimination, like being bullied or something like that. Sure. But then, then that I agree, but then that wouldn't even be looking at what's the source of bullying itself. Right. Right. Because that would be an example where even people who are <clears throat> white nuclear family, et cetera, there's still a lot of things that they need to change as well. Yeah. This isn't like a, just because you're white and you're in a nuclear family, you're doing everything perfect. And it's just because everybody else is not doing that. No, we're just saying those are things that you don't want to take away, specifically the nuclear family point and the father and the mother and all that. Those are specifically the things that you don't want to get rid of. It, it, it's not because they're white that they're doing it. It is not because they're white. They have the advantages because it's called being in a system where certain genetic lines have been favored throughout time. And I'm not talking about white versus black. I'm talking about elite versus everybody else. They do things in a certain way because they know it preserves a certain level of stability throughout their family and so forth. Hmm. But even, even in the elite levels of society, they're doing some crazy, not best shit as well. Yeah. So it's like nobody's actually doing everything correctly because everybody's still in the context of a system yeah. where we're all competing at some level. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. that's what's not being addressed at all at any level. So what's interesting to me is, and I mean, I'm sure you guys see this too, but tell me what you think. It's like the people who are promoting all this LGBTQ, Black Lives Matter, just all these different, what do you call it? Um, social justice causes, right? Pro-life, all of these things are, are not pro-life. Uh, what do you call it? Pro-choice. Pro-choice, right? I mean, even the pro-life is part of the problem too. I'm just saying, but the pro-choice specifically, it's all actually just the Edward Bernays fucking dreamed up scenarios that they've propagandized everyone into thinking I'm a morally righteous person by promoting this. It's just like you gave that example about getting women to smoke just for context. What they did was because back then it was like women shouldn't smoke because that's a man's thing, right? So they made it a symbol by calling it a freedom stick. And they did some specific publicity events where they made it so that the women saw the, the cigarette as a symbol of their equalization to themselves with men. It's like, I'm displaying my freedom. It's like, it was part of the feminist movement. The original feminist movement started back in the twenties and probably before then, 
Right. And so it was a way of saying like, I, I can, you know, it's like women wearing uh, jeans or something, you know, like pants, I can wear pants just like a man, sort of the same kind of thing. They, they smoked and they had their freedom sticks. So it was like a symbol of their equality. It was a, a Liberty torch. Liberty torch. Is that what it was? Yeah, torch of Liberty. Yeah. yeah. Torches of freedom. Yeah. yeah. Torches of freedom. Yeah, exactly. Right. Which sounds so cheesy, but, but you know that shit works. No, when I heard that, I was like, that is genius. It's genius. That is genius. You got the Statue of Liberty right there. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And it was like during a parade. And then, so all the, all the cameras were going to be there. And then, you know. Gets and they the got all the women to take out a cigarette and then light it. At the and back then, point. the only media you had was that one fucking newspaper that yep. had it on oh, the front page. And that was kind of all you saw that day. That was social media. Yeah. That was it's everything. Like, it's almost like we get all of our content from a couple of social media platforms who are making sure that certain stories are suppressed and certain ones are not. And you heard what they said about this whole Biden laptop thing. Mm -hmm. um, the Biden campaign said they were using the fact that it was banned on Twitter as the proof that it wasn't true. Yeah. <laughs> but he still won't come out and say, no, that didn't happen. The emails are false. Da, 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 da. And, and Twitter, like dancing and Twitter around also it. never said it wasn't true. They just yeah. said, it was, we think it was hacked material, therefore. But they never even said it was hacked. They just said it falls under their hacked material thing. Guideline, and it's yeah. also personal information. So they kind of like are vague about what specifically is the reasoning. And I think there's yeah, a subpoena but... against them now. What's that? I think there's a subpoena for- Well, yeah. Uh, is that for something different? Jack Dorsey, and Jack Dorsey, Mark Zuckerberg, and uh, I forget the Google guy's name because it, it's- Sudar. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, but they all had to appear before the Senate uh, for basically, you know, they're just being yelled at in essence. Nothing's hey. being done at the moment. You're doing it too obviously. <laughs> we don't want to see it. We need plausible deniability. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. Nothing is, no action is being taken against them at this moment. Uh, action needs to be taken against them for sure. That's what everybody's saying. Um, but nothing's but not even everyone's even clear about what that would be exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because we rely on these platforms. So it's like, here's a question. Um, should they be totally unregulated? You could just post whatever you want. That's what I was, uh, was going to ask. Why you. not? Then you, but then, okay. So it's okay to like share child porn. No, that's not cool. Wouldn't you just report that? And then they see, oh, it's child porn. That shouldn't be there. Well, that, that's the whole mechanism of what should and shouldn't be there. Yeah, but, but it would be the community reporting it and not just them automatically taking it down. But that happens all the time anyway, and, and shit that shouldn't be taken down gets taken down because of that. But it, it should follow under the guidelines of what's already legal in the U.S. law. Like, child porn's never legal. That's, so that's a good point. That is a good that's point. something that you shouldn't have to debate, like, okay, right. is that allowed yeah. or not? It's like, no, it's not allowed. It's illegal. That makes sense. <laughs> but right. then you run into the problems of, it's like, what if they pass a law saying that you can't uh, misrepresent health information? Mm -hmm. But that's not a law. The, see, oh, the, but, but it could be. The real point comes back to who's in control of the law. And see, that, that's exactly right. Like, that's how I look at it. It's not about whether we should regulate them per se or not. It's like, yeah, just like Drake said, that should be illegal. You can't have it on the, you can't share that kind of stuff, right? Okay. Well, you can that's also not restricting not freedom say, of speech. That's just, that's not best. Like, huh? for example, what they did with uh, Anne Frank's diaries. Like, I, I'm not well studied on this, but I did see that they made it illegal to claim, to even challenge that Anne Frank's diaries were false. So it's like- even though it was you, proven in court to be a forgery, but yeah. So the point is, it's like, if you can write something like that into law, then you can fucking write anything into law. Well, it's like what I was talking about earlier, that thing in Scotland. Like, right? you they, that, sure that. they want to they want to make um it's like a proposed bill or something and they want to make it so oh. that it like they, they specifically use the example of a discussion around the dinner table if that leads to a situation of prejudice then it could be prosecuted as a hate as a hate crime that's great right? that's like Alexa's that's like, and everyone's home listening to you yeah that's, that's like, exactly what i'm saying yeah that's like making it legal for what happened in communist oh. so soviet union right uh, like that's exactly like oh yeah snitch on your parents that's exactly what's going on in 1984 right wow. you snitch on your parents you know what's weird about yeah. about 1984 is like they use that word thought crime yeah and when i hear the word hate crime i always think of it like the word thought crime mm. 
Because like we don't we don't speak like that in America. Thought crime, like yeah. that's kind of a very British way of speaking, like the word thought crime. Because mm. um, they kind of will put words together in ways that we wouldn't necessarily put it together. But the word hate crime it sounds so similar to me like that, like meaning it has that same feeling of it being sort of like an artificial thing. Yeah, you know what I mean. So like the word thought crime, like what does that mean? It means you're guilty of thinking incorrectly. You know what I mean? Like you're thinking the wrong thoughts. You're not supposed to be thinking like that. Yeah. And I mean, isn't that what if I post something online and it's not what I'm supposed to be saying, isn't that kind of the same thing? You oh, know? Cameron, you'll be guilty so fast if that becomes a thing. This is all just self-preservation. That's why I'm making this argument. So I'm like, I've already violated all these future. Guys, please don't sell me. <laughs> we got to change these laws before, before it gets, or we got to get into power before they change the laws to get me in prison. Because you know that you can also put in a law that says it's retroactive. <laughs> right. right. So, okay. So how is us changing the law? actually going to change things for real if uh you know changing the the civil rights act or putting that into law didn't have any real effect on the society or can you even say that it didn't have a real effect on the society that's the thing it's because we were using it from the context of um okay the people who are fighting to get this equality act passed are the same people who are saying blacks are more fucked up now more than ever yeah, like if I were to say, no, they, they have it, the black case. people have it the best and they've ever had it in this country, what would they say? Well, that's not <laughs> true. No. I would think they would say, no, are you kidding me? Like, that's not true. And it's like, yeah. okay, so the Civil Rights Act, none of that stuff really mattered. None of it did anything. So by their own logic, none of that had an effect, which I agree with. It didn't have an effect because it didn't address the fundamental issues. It did but have now, an effect. Yeah. It did have an effect. Yeah, it had an effect of creating what you see now. Right, because... It solved, okay, the problem is in terms of what people are trying to solve, you could solve that and the inequality will just produce itself somewhere else. What if the starting point of the Civil Rights Act was actually to create more inequality? Get the fuck out of here, dude. No way. Come on. No, dude. No. Dude, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta talk about but, that. There's no but, way. Just like the starting point of the Edward Bernays Liberty Torches. Yeah. Was it actually about women's freedom? Mm -hmm. Was it about their enslavement? Yeah. It was about yeah. them yeah. buying shit. And, and watch that documentary for those listening because it goes into, and actually really, it's really cool because that was a real starting point for me of really starting to look at all of this stuff. Because when I was younger, I kind of took everything for granted. Feminism. Um, and see, even like if I say um, women's liberation, the way that that word is structured, it makes you think, well, of course, that's a good thing. How can you be against women's liberation? Right. As if I think they should be therefore enslaved. Right. It's like but really no. you're saying it as if it's a brand, like it's like this TM'd fucking. Yeah, exactly. Thing. Just like the Black Lives Matter thing, isn't it? Exactly. Exactly. It's, when you look at what they actually stand for, it's got nothing to do with black people. Right. It's actually more to do with this uh transgender equality act yeah exactly it's more to do with that lesbian gay transgender and so forth that's yeah. why we were talking earlier and i showed you all that thing with Charlize theron or theron or however you say her name where she adopted those black kids the, the black boy and she's then like south africa turned into, right? a, turned into a girl yeah she's in south africa yeah. yeah and turned her black son into a girl and of course people would say oh no he's actually a girl and she's just helping him all blah. And no that's not what happened pretty obvious hey, hey kim right? is that you making that noise Oh yeah, I'm clicking this thing. Sorry guys. Stop. Yeah, <laughs> it's my Morse code. It's actually a uh, subversive, <laughs> subliminal messaging. It's, a, it's to wake up the sleeper agents. <laughs> <laughs> click, click. Someone's like, I've been activated. <laughs> so, so Drake, um, Drake on, on your point about how do we do this and make sure it's different this time is, I mean, how I see it right now is that's what we're about with self-perfected, with Techno Tutor and all that is to find the right people because it does take numbers you don't actually need that many people to really get into power but it's about building a network of people with influence and us leaving a track record of what we stand for so in the next 15 years as we rise to higher positions have more wealth have more people joining all of this it becomes easier to disseminate messages amongst us and then get it out to people on a more grassroots level so that even if Twitter or Facebook or whatever starts coming out and saying Cameron Cope is the most hated man in America or 
Mitchell Snyder and Jessica Nelson are white supremacists or some shit like that, <laughs> that you know is not true. You have a track record of us. You, we now have a network of people who know us, trust us. Mm -hmm. And then also we are smart enough to understand how laws work and how the system works so that we see not just first order consequences, but second, third, fourth order consequences so that we can now take the systems that are here, such as, for example, how Amazon can get you a package in two days or um, all, all sorts of things that are already here and even things that are proposed like um, things like cryptocurrency and all that and like changes from the dollar to whatever. It's like, I see it as for anyone not watching on the video, it's like we have the world right now is going at a certain slope and we're coming in, but we're moving faster, so to speak. And we're going to eclipse it at, a, uh, at some point in the future. <laughs> My intention is to do it as fast as possible. And that's why we get the word out. But as more people come and join the movement and everything we're doing, we're going to find the people who are ready to run for Congress or be the governor of their state or mayor of their city or join us in the White House or to Canadian Parliament or whatever. So that all of us, though, the difference is our starting point. We have our principles, the 13 principles. It's on the website. And that's what we stand for. So now we have common sense and we have agreement between us of what we're actually here to do. And then the right people show up. And then in the implementation of that, we not only have the political solutions, but we have the culture and the, and the people and the branding and the messaging so that people can really see what it's about and it becomes just this common sense understanding. Oh, and then also not to mention Technotutor becoming a household name so that kids are raised with common sense. So by the time they're 18, they can actually vote for this stuff and understand what's going on instead of just being brainwashed by Facebook, Twitter and all that stuff. Cause, Oh, it felt so emotional. And Oh my God, Joe Biden. Someone was trying to tell me the other day that they're like, it was so inspirational with Joe because he stuttered. And he met this kid and they did a whole special on it where this like third grade kid also stuttered and Joe Biden gave him his personal cell phone number. Now, if you have a stuttering issue, I hope you can get that resolved because I'm sure that will help you. But I don't care about the president or attempted president helping some kid who has a stutter. Like if he wants to do like, that, go, cool. Yeah, but go be a speech therapist. But nothing <laughs> to do with him running the, the last country on earth that has any semblance of freedom. That's a great it has point. Nothing to do with it. It just pulls on your emotions because they know exactly what the fuck they're doing. Why do you think every time that he is on camera, every time he's interviewed, every time he does a debate, he brings up, and for all those who have a missing seat at the table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> who has a fucking missing seat at the table? Yet to meet anyone I know who has statistically died from not COVID. very many. <laughs> Yeah, but oh god, he is a good po politician. I loved in the most recent debate when when he like started to talk about their families, and Joe's like, "No one cares about your family. They don't care about my family." And then he looks at the camera. He's like, "But for those Americans who are lost their lives, whatever." And then Trump's like, "Joe, you talk like a politician. I'm not like the usual politician." I was like, "Oh damn, that he was, was like so typical good. politician." Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Turning to the camera. That was the saying, best oh, way to retort to against yeah. that too, because it was. You know, that's yeah. that's what we represent too, and that's yeah. what I think. What Trump is ushering in a whole new era is people getting into politics who are not standard politicians. I've like too looking into um, Dan Crenshaw. He's a Navy SEAL. He was not raised politician, and so he's right over here, by the way. Yeah, I saw that. I'm like, ah, I'm like, keep hearing more about Texas. I'm like, this is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, I think it's a new wave of people that are interested in politics now. But the only group that I see, and I've studied a lot of this, I've investigated a lot. I've talked to a ton of people. They're like, oh, you should, you know, we're starting a political party too. And I'm like, that you guys are based on, it's just, it's just like whack. It was like, um, they're trying to like, bring in some like Native American spirituality thing and it's like one life or something. And I'm like, that sounds cool, but like, that is not like, you need to have the current elite, the billionaires, the people who really know how these systems work. We need to be able to go into the rooms with them and approach it with common sense of, hey, this is still best for you too, where the world's headed. And so it's like, if you're thinking that you can just, you know, cause you're, 
doing some message that has to do with spirituality or something and you're getting no that's stupid so with us we're bringing in a combination of common sense culture bringing together a movement of people who are all in agreement and principle then also the political understanding and then the wealth and the business because it requires all fronts to do this and then we have the whole younger generation where max and seneca are an example along with all the other kids that are part of techno tutor that you don't see because cameron and katie are graciously showing max and seneca on youtube where a lot of parents aren't that bold to make videos of their kids online but there's a whole group of these kids now you'll see it with me and jess as asif drake as all y'all have kids too well, then when they turn eight or 12 or 18 that's a whole new wave too so it's like we're really this first wave to go in you know clear clear house so then the second and the third wave come in and then we can actually really live these solutions and and guarantee and and then apply the principle of prevention so that we can really see okay how do we guarantee that this stays here because it ain't going to be a nice clean overnight process right. it's probably going to be years and years of hammering this out but that's i mean there it's on record that's what we stand for that was really yeah. well explained that's, that's really well said yeah that's cool. did you want to add something else ever uh really it's just i i, I want to get into it I don't know if right now, because I don't know if you want to add more on that specific point, but just the where other people have failed, we're accounting for that. Whether it be, you know, Trump not being able to trust the other people in his administration, um, the longevity, because, for example, a president can only be in for eight years at a time. Um, or if you want to go back to any kind of movement or even way back to Jesus, too. Like, like you were saying earlier, Cameron, like he fucking screwed up. Like he didn't, he didn't achieve what he wanted to do. Uh, he didn't know enough. Yeah. Right. And, and the people he was dealing with as well. Yeah. It's like, there's, I don't know what to make of this point specifically, but I don't see any other way this would have been possible except for in this point of, in time with technology and connectivity. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Right. The internet. So, it's a really unique process. So, but I used to go into this point of like, not go into it, but be like, holy shit, like I'm so fucking lucky to be at this point in time to actually make a difference. But it, if you generate, what are you going to say? What are you going to say? <laughs> I know what you're, I know you're feeling about it. And people to deal with that, just realize we're all here at this point in time. Hmm. We've all been at all points in time. Exactly. So like, that might sound esoteric to some people, but just realize like you've always been here. So the now way you're I just here it, dealing with the consequences of what you've been creating this whole time. Exactly. It's like us as a species, us as the globe, right? It's I mean, like you it individually has, also. It, yeah, exactly. So both within it has uh, developed to the point where it can overcome. Whatever but yeah, overcome. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? And me, then you're saying also on an individual basis. Yeah. What I see overarching all of it is a lack of responsibility. Like people just don't want to take responsibility of their own lives. They don't want to take responsibility of the consequences they're created, they're creating. They don't want to take responsibility of the things that were passed down onto them mm. or like any of that. Like it is just like a complete lack of responsibility. And instead, instead we just think it's acceptable to rape children. We think it's acceptable to impulse children with sexual fantasies. Like hmm. these are children we're talking about for goodness sakes. Are you crazy? Like we have gotten to a point where this has become socially acceptable. People have become numb to it, desensitized to the to the severity of it like that's crazy and okay it, like think of yourself as a child <laughs> what were you doing you weren't dressing up as a, a drag queen and you know wanting to have sex with your uncle that's not what you're thinking about 
I was thinking about building forts in the grove and running around with the, the farm cats and with the dogs. And, you know, at age six, I had, I had my first paintball fight with my brothers and I was wearing like a, a life That's jacket and, and snow pants. And I like ran out there and I was all like, <laughs> and, mean- and they ganged up on me and shot me down. And I was like, ah, and I ran back into the house. Like, that's what I was thinking about when I was six years old. Not sex. What the yeah. fuck? Who do you think you are impulsing that on children? You just don't want to take responsibility for that pattern inside yourself. And so you're just going to desensitize the world to it? See that that's okay? You are producing monsters of children. These children are going to grow up to not give a shit about human life. Wow. Because nobody gave a shit about them. Mm. So they are going to do even worse. We are creating monsters of children because you haven't seen them as a child. You've seen them as a sex toy, play thing that's just ignorant. When they were smarter than you ever were, but you suppressed that and you took that away from them. Fuck, Slade. And it's funny because um, when you say, so you think it's okay that, you know, a child's getting an impulse with all this stuff. When Jessica says that, she doesn't mean you're literally thinking, oh, it's okay that there's dying children. She's saying that through our complete like abdication of, oh, I'm just going to focus on what I want to focus on. That's what's showing that we're okay. Yeah. As in feeling guilty or being like, no, 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 I don't think that's okay. It doesn't fucking mean anything. It's, com- it's completely valueless. No matter what you watch that convinces you that, uh, how you feel is the most important thing. It's the least important thing. It only matters what you're doing about it. And so it, it, it fits in really well because we're passing all these bills to include people's feelings. Now that's what it is. That's what that equality it, it's not, we're not passing all these bills. Right. But it's like the, you know, the bill C16 in, in Canada doing something very similar. Um, and like think of all the things that we could be doing which is like okay right. guys let's all get together and just solve poverty mm. but why is that the one thing they're not focused on because all of these things like you said B- bill c16 all these different things is to push an agenda to get us to focus on something that will only weaken us mm-hmm. as as a collective because it's totally reinforcing the dependence on like looking for feelings and and building up an identity for yourself you know what i mean like that's every the whole focus is on building up some kind of identity and then feeling something about it but you know what would happen at this point (laughs) if you all got into a room we're like okay so um what's we're all gonna all you know everybody okay theoretically right okay it's time to uh, discuss how we can actually change poverty. Okay. Um, Miss Linda, can you please speak? Um, excuse me. Did you just call me Miss Linda? Oh, I, ooh, I'm, I apologize. Um, how, how should I address you? No, 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 no. You, this is 2020. <laughs> and then people, and then that would be it. And my, she's the, like, I propose a motion to disbar uh, prime minister. Asset yeah. From the cancel room, that motherfucker. Like, Fuck, man. Exactly. Right. And then it's like a back and forth for three days on that. Exactly. For three it's months. funny. You joke. I know you're, you're, you're joking with an awareness, but some people might think you're just exaggerating, but I'm saying that for I've a reason, seen a lot of that happening lately yeah. in governments and, you know, public education and so forth where they're just going like, on okay, for a week. The only on that. way we can actually have this conversation is if we get rid of all the bigot, racist, sexist, transphobic, xenophobic people. So first, before we have the conversation about poverty, let's make sure that we eliminate anybody who's, eventually it'll grow over time to become anybody who's not transgender. Okay, but the For example, thing is, the only way to solve these problems that have to do with our feelings and emotions, we first have to address things that make it, it impossible for you to survive. Right. Like if you, if you don't have nutrition and if you don't have clothes, if you don't have sh- proper shelter, like for this living organism 
to be alive. Fuck your feelings. Fuck your emotions. There's individuals who don't even have a right to live. Do you understand? Like, that doesn't even make any sense. We're parading around, stomping and saying, my feelings are hurt. This person's feelings are hurt. And I just, I think it's not right. We all have all these feelings and none of them are getting addressed. And I just, I just have this feeling about these feelings. And I think we need to pass laws about these feelings. (laughs) But people are dying, physically dying. Fuck your feelings. You know, what's crazy though, is that they will say that the people who are being misgendered and so forth, that they're being like, they'll say violence, they'll say erased, they'll say it's a genocide. They'll use the terms like of yeah. what would apply to real actual physical reality, which is actually happening. And like, you know, people don't like it when I would say like on Facebook, for example, that you're just wearing a mask because you're totally self-interested. You don't care. You don't give a shit about anything. And they say like, I saw someone say today, like, oh, you're just doing whataboutism, you know, like just trying to change the subject. And it's like, no, you literally weren't doing anything about real problems in this world before this, Mm -hmm. you know, before someone told you to care about racism and COVID, you literally weren't doing anything. You didn't care. And now you think all you have to do is wear a mask and everyone should just wear a mask. You literally just want everybody to put on a display, which is really just a sign of submission to some authority. Yeah. I mean, cause isn't it, isn't it what always strikes me about, it, and I'm kind of switching the topic for a second, but it's like, everyone's walking around wearing the masks, right? When are they going to stop? Like when the government says not to, or is it when the, CNN that was the says only not answer. to? That was the only answer that I could come up with. It's just when the government says it's okay. But the government even didn't even tell people, them to do it in the first place. Yeah. Even some people will not stop even when the government says you don't have to anymore yeah because cameron you mentioned that there was that company that said it's in their terms and services now right like well it's like it's yeah exactly it's part of our terms of service you have to do this and it's like you know and and to, to jessica's point about um there was something you said that made me think of of how everything is moving towards subscription Right. Oh, remember, the, did y'all see that article? I don't remember who shared it or where it was, but about the agenda 2030 stuff. It was written in like 2012 or 2013 or something or 2016, maybe. Like the whole um, UN and World Economic Forum. Like, well, this was specifically yeah about the city of the future and everything. And it's like, you're not going to own any property. Oh, I think oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe David posted that. Oh, yeah. I saw that. It's crazy. It's like, you, you can't own anything because you're going to have to have everything on subscription. Mm-hmm. But this goes to the point you were making about, it was when you said something about, you know, you have to, um, it's basically you have to pay to exist here. You know, some people don't even have the right to exist. And that's kind of the fundamental starting point that we've had forever, which is that you don't deserve to be here. You have to pay to live. Mm-hmm. That's why everybody's yeah. like looking it's for just- the hereafter. And it's like, God's going to forgive your debts. Like you're literally in debt by existing here. Yeah. I was just going to say, like, emphasize that point by being alive, you're in debt. So that means that if you don't get money to get out of debt, sort of say you will die, you will perish. You do not have the right to exist. Yeah, because yeah, I mean it's it's a debt based system, instead of one where it's just a fundamental starting point of like creation. I mean, how how ridiculous is that, right? <laughs> that we could just have a system, you're just born into it where you have enough, and then we can all contribute to each other. Have you guys ever played Minecraft? No. A tiny bit. Minecraft is like a survival mode where you go out, you have lives, and like. Oh, I never played on survival mode. So that's like the story mode, right? It's like you go out, you have lives. Oh, okay. You- and all that stuff right uh and then there's the creative mode that's where i played there you go right so they just give you a, a 99 of every thing that you can use to make stuff and you just make stuff right and there's you know there's two different it's two different ways of playing the game it's two different starting points right and it's interesting you you guys say that it's like 
what's inherently rewarded is like, what does it come back to? How do you make money, right? It's like, you have to beat out another human. Whether you're an entrepreneur or you're taking out of their businesses or you're just going for a job, you can't inherently want everybody to have a job mm. because yeah. that means you're not going to get, your, the chances of you not getting the job that you want or just a job period, closer to the roof, right? And so it's like fostering this inherent discrimination competition competition right which is yeah. the racism the sexism the all the isms it's, it's like by seeing another human being you see the potential for you not surviving because that person exists right right it's isn't like that, that literally what the COVID is reinforcing now <laughs> with the yeah. response to it anyways it's like oh a person cameron you made the status of okay uh <laughs> she's or, I'm gonna die it's another human being <laughs> you made the status of um how many people lost more people from COVID or family and friends? Yeah. Yeah. Well, how did you word it? it I said, it, how many people like raise your hand if you've lost more family and friends over COVID than from COVID. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just and because like, you don't agree with all the bullshit. Uh -huh, exactly. You know, people so, say like, you don't care. And it's like, you didn't care before you were told to care. Yeah. Because and again, just to reinforce the point, it's like, there's always been deadly viruses. They've always existed. And they've always been able to be spread. And the old, the elderly and the obese and so forth were always the highest risk. Mm -hmm. And you didn't know from one year to the next if when you got the flu, it could be the mutated version that could then become a pandemic, did you? No. Assuming that's how it works. You didn't know that. So haven't you this your entire life been just playing a game of kind of like, well, I hope this isn't the year that I spread the super virus. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, all it took was just to wear a mask this whole time. Oh, Why and quarantine. doing it forever. Why haven't this always been done? Like, and you know, it's been done in the past, like in previous pandemics, they had, they showed these pictures of people in like the 1920s wearing a mask and shit. I'm not <laughs> arguing for that. I'm just saying you never even thought about it. You didn't care. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, you know, like old people are going to die from the flu, right? So you didn't care enough to wear a mask before. And so how many people are seriously questioning themselves of like, is this actually the best thing to do? Or am I just doing it because I'm being manipulated into doing it? Somebody, and it, it, to, that, to that point, somebody, that somebody asked me yesterday, they said, um, like, the mask is the least, it's like the, the lowest point to show that you care. It's like the, the least thing that you could do to show that you care. I agree. <laughs> so I, uh, that's why I don't do it. I'm doing I, the most I, I can do well. <laughs> yeah. like with my life. I agree as well. I was like, that's why I'm not doing it. That's like, I'm not doing it. Cause there's so, so much bullshit behind it. Like going into a restaurant. It's like such a joke. There's, it's like you wear the mask up until you get to the table and then the waiter or waitress and like, you're not six feet apart from anybody. It just, and then if I, this were a real pandemic, we would not be going out. Like yeah, exactly. would be know, if you actually were right afraid now. and you really thought it was, you were taking it seriously, why would you even go to a restaurant? Yeah, exactly. It, like, don't like, you think that it's possible the person in the kitchen like didn't wear it properly and they coughed on your food? You actually really think that you're preventing it? Yeah, it's it's the biggest Nobody's virtue signal. Nobody's questioning anything. They get no. told something, and you know they what don't it is? look. Oh, does this make sense? Hold on, I you know what? The, the, you know what though, Jess? Even, they don't even think that they should question because they don't even understand what questioning is. What if they are though? Like, what if people are having the same thoughts that we're all talking about right now? Maybe not all the way, but they're like, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. But then it's like, but I don't want to be that person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's exactly. how many people I, I mean i can't possibly know the answer but i bet you there's more people that are doing it from the perspective of they don't want to be confronted about it yeah, yeah. they don't want to be like the asshole who's not doing it because yeah. everyone's oh, thinking they are even if they're like yeah i know it's bullshit and there's so many people the people who are the most honest about it is like when they're doing their job and we'll be somewhere and we'll be like you know do you have to wear that all day and they're like yeah it really sucks like you know, <laughs> you, know I'm like, you don't have to wear it and they're like oh, okay cool you know whatever it's like they don't they, they're just doing it because they have to so the people who are it's funny because they try to reverse it and make it like 
we salute all of you who, you know, work in the front lines of the Walmart stocking the groceries to provide us. It's like literally like, we salute you, dear slaves. Like, you know what I mean? It's like some weird dystopian sci-fi shit where like the, the fat rich people sit on the top of the heap and they're like, we salute you. All those ones who are like literally under the pile, like just holding you up. And you're like, you are doing your duty. We are so thankful for you for doing your part. And meanwhile, it's like the person's not gladly doing their slave duties. They're not like, yes, I, I, I wear this mask and I do this, pro I do this for you. They're like, I literally have to put food on my table. If, and, and if I had a different education level, I'd be sitting on my ass on Zoom like all of you people. There's no fucking way I'd be one. That's true even before the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you know what so, I mean? And so it, it's a joke. What? It's even crazier when you think about, oh, you can't go to your AA meeting, but you can go buy alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> you, wow. you, you can't go to the farmer's market, but you can go to Walmart. Mm -hmm. So not only have they just had everybody wearing these masks, but they they took away any <laughs> any forms of ways that you actually fundamentally supported yourself. Things that didn't necessarily support them. Things that didn't feed your issues, which would then feed you needing pharmaceuticals or, you know, whatever it is, like all of it was just to condense your spending to only the things that fed them and not anywhere else, not to the local farms. Hang on, Jess, 100%. hang on. Walmart 100%. has an organic section, so. <laughs> yeah, Jess, this sounds like oh. a conspiracy theory. No, Jess, that was really well said. <laughs> that was really well said. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll want to tell a story real quick. Um, yeah, I, I took Max trick-or-treating last night, right? Because- uh, How was that? Were you safe? Cool. Did you I, wear I stayed a mask? safe. Did I wear a mask? No. <laughs> he didn't either. <laughs> um, Gloves, but, uh, then. Gloves for sure, right? No, I, I just wore a uh, like a speedo. Oh, it's not cold. <laughs> what, what did he uh, dress up? You have, as? To, you have to protect your openings. That's good. <laughs> uh, Max wore that little chameleon suit that he <laughs> had since he was like three. He was a reptilian. He loves that. Yeah, exactly. No, but um, but what's interesting because uh, we weren't planning on going trick or treating, you know, like I don't per se have something against. The, the general activity, but we didn't, we didn't want to impulse him when he was young with go door to door and get candy and stuff. You know what I mean? And like, there's just a lot of other things within it. It's kind of like with the Santa Claus, there's a lot of other things within it that are not best. So he's aware of it. He understands it. And, and last night we, uh, he wanted to go drive around in the truck. He likes to do that sometimes. Like he just wants to go drive around. So I was like, sure, let's go drive around the neighborhood. And then I realized as we're driving around, Oh yeah, it's Halloween. Like, you know, we had actually been out earlier in the day when people were setting up their stuff. So we had noticed there was like tables outside. So anyways, um, I was like, hey, because he asked me, he asked me something. I can't remember what it was, but something like, you know, can we go talk to these people or whatever? And I was like, hey, why don't we just go home? If you want, we can put your like chameleon suit on and we can go and do trick or treating. Would you like to do that? And he was like, yeah, that's cool. So we did that. And then we just drove back home because we're just in the neighborhood. We, and we started walking down the street and we went to another street, like just right across from ours, where I, could, I had seen there was a lot of people outside. So we just went from door to door, not door to door, walked down the street rather, the sidewalk. And every once in a while, there'd be like a table outside with like a bowl of treats on it. Right. Mm -hmm. And so he would go up to it and he'd be like, oh, he'd take some. Right. And then every once in a while, there'd also be people outside, but it's like, you know, in our neighborhood, there's like the sidewalk. And then obviously, like any neighborhood, there's the people's driveway, driveway, patio, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. They'd be sitting back there, mm -hmm. generally speaking, generally speaking, right? And kind of like just sitting there, like, I guess, because it's like, you don't want to just put the bowl of treats out for no reason. Of course, there was that too. People just put it out there, I guess, so people wouldn't come to their door, right? Um, so we'd say hi to people and Max would be like, it was so funny. Every person, every table Max went up to where there was people, he told them he's trick-or-treating. It was so funny. It was like, he was trying to explain to them, we're trick-or-treating, right? You know, cause he doesn't have the context to understand. Like, you know, like they know that you're doing that, right? But it was funny too, because the only exposure he'd had to trick-or-treating was books that we'd read, like one or two books where in the book, there's some trick-or-treating, right? One of them is these kids, they go to a farm and they pick apples 
And at the end of the end, they pick a pumpkin at the end of it, they go trick or treating and they put out their pumpkin, their jack-o'-lantern and the mom hand, hands out the apples for the treats. And he was telling me he wanted to bring apples. So whenever he got the treats, he could give them apples as well. Oh, and I was cool. like, and I go, well, Max, um, we, we don't have to do that. Like you don't have to give them something. It's part of the, the tradition is like, you just take the stuff. And he was like, okay, well, could, but we could give them money. And I'm like, yeah, we could. I'm like, but you don't have to. Like part of it is it's, it's understood that when you're trick-or-treating, you could just get the candy and stuff. And right. But we can say, thank you. We can talk to them and stuff. Right. So every person we went up to, he'd be like, I'm trick-or-treating, you know, and they would be, and it was so funny because every person would say, wow, I love your, your, your costume. And he would go, yeah. <laughs> like every time it was so funny. He would be like, yeah. You know? And, um, but there was one point in particular, we went up to a fam, we went up to one table <laughs> and there was a whole bunch of people out there just standing around the table talking, not wearing masks, nothing. And I think probably the reason why they had the table was just because that's kind of what everyone's doing now. Mm -hmm. So, cause it seemed like they didn't really, they weren't concerned about the virus or anything. Um, cause they were just standing around talking and talking to each other and, you know, no problem, like really close together, but they probably knew I'm assuming that if they didn't have the table out there, people wouldn't come to their door or whatever. So it was interesting. Cause you could see people like, didn't really, some people didn't care, but then there was one person we went up to, to their table and like they were sitting a little bit back from the table, probably like this far back. And they had like a, they had a little table in front of them with a laptop and they had like blankets and they were wearing masks and they were like watching a TV show. And I guess they just wanted to be, I don't know. I didn't ask them, but it was interesting because Max <laughs> saw them to over be there. In, they wanted to be in this world, but also in that world. They wanted world. to be in the action, I guess. I don't yeah. know. But it was interesting because I noticed Max started walking over to them and like the guy was kind of like starting to like, like starting to move. I didn't know what he was going to do, but almost like, and he was like, Oh, there's treats on the table. You can take as many as you want. Like trying to kind of persuade Max to go <laughs> over there. Right. And so I was like, Hey Max, let's come over here. But I could see they were kind of like, I mean, they had like full on, it looked like they were like hunkered down. It was so interesting. I'm just um, imagining Max so goes out. over there. Like, no, I see the treats. I want to say hi to you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Are you doing human being look at us. yeah exactly but it, it was it was just a really i don't know why i brought it up necessarily but it was a really interesting experience like with him and and just talking to him the whole time right and um and he got some candy like m m's and skittles because that's obviously what people are giving right and of course like he's looking at it and he was like wow he was like um he was like uh can i can i eat some and i was like sure we can have some and I said, but we're just going to have a little bit. All right. Because this candy is like not the best stuff for you. Right. And it's not like we don't let him have sugar and stuff. Like he has, we have desserts from time to time. You guys know, like we have things that you would consider treats and all that, but obviously like a lot of the candy that you get on Halloween, they just put a bunch of extra shit in it. That's totally not best like all the, food, all the food dies and all the that. food dies and preservatives, just all kinds of stuff, you know, and it's like not even real chocolate and stuff, yeah, yeah. but you know, it's a fun time. And, and I understand also in moderation, it's okay. Right. But um, we, uh, you know, I let him have a little, I forget what it was he had first. I think he had Swedish fish. And it was interesting because we had gone to the playground Swedish and seen fish? a Swedish fish on the ground. Yeah, it's like these little like gummy fish. Okay. They're like in the shape of fish. Do you don't have so those? Had, huh? Probably like the equivalent of Maynard's, like just gummy. Yeah. We used to get five pound bags of Swedish fish, store them in my locker in high school and everyone would come to my locker to get the Swedish fish. <laughs> That's how you can get friends, right? Yeah, how to win friends and influence people. <laughs> um, Swedish fish in your locker. <laughs> but it was cool. Like he he had some of those, and then and then he's such a good negotiator. You guys will see when you come down here. He's like, he's like, and because I because I explain everything right, and I said um, he was like, um, when can I have some more candy? Because he had all this other candy in there, and and I was like, well, I said, um, why don't we just let's take a little break. And we'll keep walking and then we can have some in a little bit, but I really, you know, I just want you to pay attention to kind of how you're feeling. And, um, because, you know, I was looking at the sugar content on them. I'm like, you've, you've never really had this much sugar at one time. So I was like, let's just see how you're processing and everything and see if your behavior changes. You know, if you start acting very stimulated, like, let's just, let's just be aware. So we don't overstimulate and overload on sugar. Right. And he's like, okay. And then he was like walking for a minute and he was like, um, my behavior seems normal. He's like, I'm not, I'm not acting crazy, Cam. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's true. 
and, and we started across the street and he was like, my body's saying that I can have some more sugar right now or some more, some more candy or whatever. And I was like, okay, you want to have some more? I was like, let's walk this far. And when we get across the street, then we can get a, we, we'll, we'll sit down and we'll look at what to get next. And I'll give my recommendations of what you might like. You can try whatever you want. So it's like, as soon as we got to the other side, he like sits down and he opens up his bag and he's like, yeah, he's like, I'm, uh, he's like, um, he's like, everything's fine. He's like, it's, I'm not feeling stimulated. Right. It's just interesting how he's like explaining to me. Right. But I could also see he was actually doing okay with it. So he would have a little bit more. And so we had a few different things last night. Um, and it was interesting too, because like, I'll give you another example, a couple more examples. There was this, uh, yellow, I don't, I think they're called lemon heads. I'm, I can't remember, but they're like a yellow, like kind of like a, uh, small like uh it's like a hard candy right yeah Uh like a fuzzy peach i don't know what that is but but i'm saying it's not all these canadian candies (laughs) yeah but you guys got that's so crazy (laughs) that canadians have canadian candy and and i'm weird for it screw you guys (laughs) (laughs) you guys have mars bars (laughs) you guys don't even have french fries you have poutine (laughs) <laughs> had to like try to turn, like we'll just put gravy on it and call it something else Cameron don't even act like you wouldn't love that shit I have tried it and I did not like it <laughs> so I guess you're the weird one <laughs> no it's pretty it's a it's a lot it's a lot for sure but uh, uh what was I gonna say oh but but the point is he, he had the um the little yellow lemon header I'll just call it that and and he was like I want to have that and I was kind of surprised because he doesn't normally, I wouldn't have guessed that he would want some kind of like sour lemon thing. And I explained to him what it was. He's like, I want to try it. And I was like, okay. I said, but here's, here's the thing about this. I said, you're still, you're still younger. And you know, there's still a risk that if you put the whole thing in your mouth, you might swallow it and it's pretty small. Right. So it's not big, but it's not small at the same time, but it's not like, you know, very big. So it could still go down your throat. And I was explaining that to him. I said, um, So in this context, I said, it'd be best if you don't like, just keep it in your mouth or whatever. Okay. Cause you're still learning how to do stuff like that. Right. And he was like, okay. He's like, well, he's like, I'll just lick it. So I gave it to him and he just licked it. He just kept licking it. You know what I mean? Like that's how, in a certain sense, how disciplined he is. Do you know what I mean? Without me ever having to apply any force, like there's nothing within him. That's like, if he were to put it in his mouth, I'm going to yell at him, punish him, anything. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I can trust him with it. Yeah, that's really now cool. I'm not stupid about it. I don't trust him with keeping it in his mouth just because I can know the risk. Like it's it's small enough that he could, you know, and also it's like it's late at night. He had sh- those rubbery shoes on that he they're kind of slippery, like his feet are not fully in there. So he would like trip on the sidewalk sometimes. You know, there's a lot of I'm having to consider that, right? So I'm not gonna just let him hold it in his mouth. Um, like you would normally do something like that. So that's just one example. Like it was just really cool to see that. And then it was interesting too, because we were walking back home and there was another there was a, a couple sitting outside that we had already gone to when we came up the other way. And they were like, Hey, cause there wasn't a lot of people out. They were like, Hey, we have some leftover. They called them boo bags. They were like little, just paper bags with like treats in it. And Max loved that by the way. He thought that was so funny. He was like, Cam, why are they called boo bags? He just thought that was so funny. Right? That is, that is funny. It is a funny word. He loved it. And um, even though he understood why, right. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> they were like, Hey, do you want some more? Like we, you can have another boo bag. We've got, we've got plenty. And Mac, it was funny because I didn't say anything. Cause I, I would, I wouldn't have had a problem if you want to go get it. I mean, I wouldn't have seen an issue with it is what I'm saying. And he's standing there and he's like, I think he actually just wanted to go home and um, like eat some more candy. I think that's what was going on, but it was interesting. Cause he goes, uh, he was like talking across the street to him. He was like, no, he goes, my dad said that we've had enough candy, so I'm not going to have any more. And they were like, oh, okay, well, I mean, you can still have some if you want to. And it was interesting that they would still try to convince him, even though he just said, but I, I wasn't having an issue with it. So I was just letting him make the decision in a way, right? But it was cool because yeah, he was like, my dad said that, you know, we've had enough, we have enough candy, so um, I'm not going to have any more. It's just really fascinating because he literally just turned four, as you guys know. And um, it's like, it's a different way of looking at the word discipline, probably, right? Um, because it's not an imposed thing. It's not like, cause I had told him we, we have enough candy. Like, and I asked him like, do you want to go home or do you have enough? I think we have enough. So, but I didn't tell him, no, you can't have any more. It wasn't like that. It was just, he made that decision. And I guess he had enough and he wanted to go home and eat it and everything. Um, but it was just really cool because he's not for a lot of reasons being impulsed with a lot of things. So it's not like he's 
just run up and give me all the candy and ah, you can crazy and everything. It wasn't like that at all, you know? And then when we got home, he told Katie about what we did and he was showing her the candy and she was having some. And I just told him, I said, Hey Max, I'm going to like get rid of the rest of this candy. Cause we're not going to just keep it. And you know, we'll get other stuff. If you want other things that are sweet, you know, we can get that stuff. So he like didn't have any problem with me tossing out the rest of it, which was all flavors that probably we didn't want anyways. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, Jeez. It's, it's, it's just really, when just I was ridiculous. a child and I trick or treated, I ran around. I mean, we lived out in the country, so we'd have to drive to the next place, but like, getting the candy it was so stimulating for me and i loved having so much candy and i was so excited about it and i would get as much as i possibly could out of every place and i we would get done trick-or-treating and i just you know i had been eating it the whole time we're trick-or-treating we're like trading with our, our my brothers like to fight the best pieces and then like afterwards i always ate my candy faster than anyone else because i would just eat it for like days straight and my mom would have to hide our candy in our house she wouldn't get rid of it she'd hide it because she you know if she'd get rid of it we'd be pissed and it's just like what see i th- i i brought that up specifically because i had that same memory as a child where our parents yeah, yeah. it's like oh there's like days of candy and they have to say no or like they're well no we're gonna throw it away because you guys keep eating too much like all that stuff and i just was very clear with max i'm like we're not gonna keep this like you know like we both know this is not the best stuff it's okay for us to in this moment we're participating in something we're having fun you want to have some candy you want to try it out i had to tell him what a skittle was i had to tell him what an M&M was and what the difference would be when he had it, you know, so he could decide which one he wanted. And it was actually kind of interesting because I'm like, he's four years old. And he didn't even know what Skittles were. Huh. You know what I mean? He didn't know what yeah. M&Ms are. And it's not like he's never had chocolate or anything, right? Yeah. Like Katie made a batch of cookies and they were gone in a day. <laughs> like, and it was like a whole bunch of cookies, right? So we like to have treats and stuff like that, right? But, um, but it's, so it's, I, and I'm, and I'm emphasizing that because I, I don't want parents to think that I would suggest that you can't have fun or you can't, have treats and things like that but people will use that to justify stuff that's not to your best benefit you know what i mean it's like m&ms they're not best they're not the ingredients are not like you mentioned you mentioned the the dyes and everything that's in it yeah. that's what i specifically like- told max i was like there's a lot of chemicals that are added to this that mm-hmm. are not necessary and i'm not saying chemicals are bad i mean water's a chemical but i'm saying these are chemicals that are added to it on purpose for preservative or whatever reasons and like the dyes and stuff too like it's not really it's not good neurologically and all this but so it's like why is it in there just to make it attractive and it works like it does work it, it i remember the first time we took max really into like a supermarket was i don't remember how old he was but we went to the beach and then we needed to get some, some stuff from kroger and so we took him in there which is like a grocery store here in texas and we took him in there and I don't, I don't recall him ever going into a real supermarket other than like Whole Foods prior to that because we usually would shop at Whole Foods and they don't do a lot of the stimulation thing for kids there. You know what I mean? As or I don't know what it's like now, but you know, they didn't usually do that. But I remember we were walking down the aisle and there was like some, I don't remember what it was, but it was like all the cereal boxes, whatever it was. He was like, can I have that? He's like, what's that? Like, can I have that? You know, and with Max, he doesn't beg. So it was, it, you know, we were patient and everything, even if he did, it wouldn't be an issue. We would support him. But I could see in that moment, just the way that they designed the boxes, the color systems, everything was designed to get his attention. And that was a really interesting, because I think most parents, they would just take that for granted. So they would never feel the impact. I mean, maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe they still feel the impact of their kids turning into a fucking monster. But it's like, I could see in that moment, he was being manipulated by these companies to look at it and ask me for it. So then I have to decide, well, I don't want to say no or some bullshit. You see what I mean? So I can see like very clearly how, you know, and Jess was making this really good point. It's like, we're allowing all of this, you know, even think about the research that goes into like an alcohol ad and getting it to sink into your subconscious as an adult, when you're driving down the road, you know, like a billboard, you don't think that works on children? Hmm. It probably works. I remember, better. I remember when Mac, uh, what was the last place? Not the last event, but the event before that, that Max was Mexico, at. Mexico, oh, yeah. Denver. Or, yeah. No, no, it was, I think it was Denver because you go down the escalators and then there was like a little kind of cafe, but also like you can buy little gummies and stuff like that on the side. And it was me, you and Max and Max had one over to like the little, there's just little plastic bags of candy. And he was like, what's that one? 
and you're like, oh, it's just gummies. And he's like, okay. And he kind of moved on. And then like, he, we, we kind of both looked at it and you could see that there was like a bear on it that was like, a, versus the other ones that were just labeled, but that one like specifically drew the attention, right? So it's yeah. like designed for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And people don't see any problem with that. And it's like, what are you doing to do anything about it? You talk about changing the laws. Instead of saying you shouldn't be able to advertise alcohol, like we all know it's there. Is anyone like, oh, what's this alcohol thing? Like you, you fucking know. You, there's a liquor store. You can go to the liquor store and get some. Why do I need to be advertised? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and like, oh, you have a right to do that. That people will defend it like it's a right. But it makes no sense whatsoever. And then you'll say that the transgender LGBT people are like all oppressed and all this stuff, and it's like. I'm not saying they aren't, but trying to make them like some kind of special status of victims without addressing how our reality is designed in a way to victimize everybody. Do you know what I mean? It's like, if I save the trans people, everything will be, I made a joke post on Facebook and I was like, you know, I realized if everybody were a trans, uh, a black trans woman, gay black trans woman whatever it was like there would be any suffering there would be no inequality but that's kind of in a caricature kind of way what's being presented yeah you know if we would just structure society so those people feel okay and it's like yeah but at that point how will it evolve it'll be like procreate it'll be like they'll have to find something else some other other identities and i think it'll probably and you could still procreate i have a But I'm saying it, it'll evolve into something else where it's like yeah. your uh, your identity as a consumer. Like, it'll be like <laughs> people who prefer Gucci clothing are the most oppressed people on the planet and they're discriminated against or some shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It'll be like, that's kind of what it is. It's like my sports yeah. team that I like is a part of your identity. And it becomes yeah. like your gender and all this other stuff. What were you going to so say? Lakers are being oppressed. The, <laughs> the real... the. You must change the if you watch Century of the Self, you'll come to understand that. Okay, well, if we back up, the purpose of the system. What's the purpose of the system? Like, what is it here to do? The current system. Yeah. Just the to, purpose of it is to continue existing. That's it. Keep the rich rich. It's like the purpose of it is just to like keep producing money. It's for it to survive. Money. Yeah. Exactly. So, if that's the fundamental purpose. We start there. The point of the century of self of the self is how things shifted from you should buy this car because it's an extremely high quality car. It'll last you this long, but you'll be able to travel places much faster to you should buy this car because it'll make you feel really good. Make you you better than everybody else. (laughs) Exactly. Right. The person who would say, I don't give a fuck about that. How do they think of themselves? Versus the person who's like, oh shit, I need to buy that car. How do they think of themselves? Now, if you look at it, Republican or conservative is talking about how they spend money, right? Or how they, how they create policy around money. More conservative than their spending. That's indicative of the, per- the, the individuals who support that party, basically put. So uh, versus liberal, it's like you're more liberal in your, your, fun- your monetary policy. Now, but if we just look at the, the, on the ground level, right? It's like the more people feel bad, the more they'll buy stuff to make them feel good. And the purpose of the system is to, for money, just to make more and more and more, more money. So doesn't it just make sense that the only purpose of everything that's being outputted by the system is to make you want to buy stuff? Therefore, to make you feel like your life isn't good and the only way to get a good life is if you subscribe to Netflix or buy this, you know, whatever. That's what they've coined as the American dream. Right. Make enough money of so happiness. you can buy all the things that are encompassed in the American dream. A house, this kind of vehicle, a boat, this kind of grill, this kind of backyard, this kind of 
cabin, this kind of Netflix account, these kind of foods, having these kind of parties with these kinds of alcohol, with this kind of watch, wearing these kind of clothes. Right. It's like when people say, wow, I am living the life. Like that is just boom, an image. (laughs) Yeah. See, but you know what we're here to do is to make that a reality for everybody Mm. as a right. Mm. Everyone has a home. Everyone has transportation, communications, everything that they need. But not that like what Cameron's referring to is what Jess said, not like the image of I'm living the life. I am sipping champagne. Like, you know, I'm talking about the hot tubs, the crystal, the, the, <laughs> but right. The it's VIP like, in the club. Everyone should be in the VIP section. It, it's funny because I remember, uh, at, you're like the one guy who's not, and everyone's like, who's that guy? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to be there. <laughs> um, that's, I, I think forward. it was Marx. Was it Marx or Engels? They, they kind of envisioned all of society and reality as a sort of constant back and forth from the VIP to the non VIP section. Exactly. Of the, exactly. Sort of like class of, a, of, a, of an antithesis, sort of a situation and thesis of, yeah. No, that's good. That was well described. <laughs> I sure. think that's what it was. Yeah. It was cool because uh, there was somebody at the gin event um, in Mexico. And uh, we're talking and, and I was telling him like the things that you think will make you happy are not going to make you happy. And I was explaining that point And he was like, dude, I know exactly what you're talking about. I just never thought about it on the big scale because me and my wife, after our, for our honeymoon, we went to Costa Rica and literally chilled on the beach for like two fucking years. And after that, I felt depressed. That's not a honeymoon, bro. That's like, we just moved there. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it was just like, we're going to go there on honeymoon and then we're just going to chill there. You're well off. Um, we're not doing that. <laughs> he was like, you guys making jokes about your, what you're going to do for your honeymoon? You yeah, guys are going to well, chill. We're not going to do that. Well, we already know what we're doing. We're not doing You guys that. are going to do that? That's cool. No. Okay. <laughs> um, but that's what he was saying. He's like, afterwards, I'm like, I was so antsy and like anxious to get like go back and do something real in this world right and the point is when we say when we think of what we want or if if i say the phrase man you're really living the life or man i am living it up right now it's like there's an image that comes up but where did you get that image from and what does it make you want to do it keeps you motivated to keep going to work it keeps you motivated to keep trying to buy things to look like that picture. And it was given to you from the people who benefit from you doing those things. So that's like the enclosed system that we're participating in. And the reason why Century as a Self was so cool for me is because like you said, Cameron, I used to be so, I still am to a certain degree, right? And I'm, I'm investigating more and more. It's like the, the blissful uh, unawareness of what things are here for like billboards, like, like I would be the person who's like Black Lives Matter, like 100% Black Lives Matter. I support that movement, no problem, right? It's like feminism, like, do you, do you not support equality? I don't understand, like, you're kind of a fucking asshole if you don't, right? And so my point is, I'm like, yeah, yeah, everything that we see in this world, it always has our best interests in mind. That's the whole point. That's where I came from, right? And so it was the process of educating myself and really it was just understanding why the problems are happening in my life and being able to change those. I'm like, Oh, this is why everyone's fucked. (laughs) Like it's the same thing. And so bringing it back to that point of all that this is to do, which you guys have been waking me up to the truth of this. I remember Drake, uh, I posted the definition of black, right. And there's so many different definitions and, and there's about a bunch of them centered around like, you know, black, like demonic or like, you know, like whatever, like what would black would represent like evil, stuff like that. I was like, wow, now I see what they're saying. Like white culture is bad. It's about black culture. And they're not talking about Drake, like Obama educated, whatever. They're not talking about like the smart, you know, black people who exist because that's not black culture. They're talking about black culture. Like, fucking like, dress up it's it's the like things emo. that you don't want it's the it's like exactly uh, black as in black market like That's- exactly Ex- thank you for clarifying that it's exactly that and i remember drake and i talked about this one time on the phone for like two hours or three hours one time yeah this is a long time that's why i was like dude it's about fucking time you fucking see this yeah you're like you're getting it <laughs> yeah <laughs> like or like you got it or something like that but but make it more clear because i know what you're talking about but just from my perspective and i'll just 
say my yeah, yeah please one. black meaning like like you said black market yeah like black ops yeah black arts yeah yeah like whatever like meaning not your skin is black right like black yeah. meaning it's it's under under because the ground because your skin is not under. black to start with to begin with it's right not. where did that come from that people are black there you go it's like literally an odd it's like an embedded in our language connotation of black people being bad or something like it, it's like a right that's why i'm saying when you accept all this stuff you have to actually first see people of color black people whatever you want to call it as inferior to begin with mm -hmm. like you don't actually see them as equal you see them as oh these poor little things that are so just they're just oh well and so you don't actually see the equality and then you're trying to perhaps out of guilt a go along with covering up that and then making it seem like everything's okay, but you're not actually doing anything about the things that would actually cause, like, for example, think about it like this. If you have, if, if you actually believe that these if certain people are victimized more so by society than everybody else, um, you would just want to take care of everybody, not level the playing field, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> That's so clear. That's so. You see clear. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's well, it's, what, it's it's incredibly obvious. I mean, as far as, okay, someone is, uh, you know, in a position where they're hurt or they're like not being taken care of. You take care of them. You bring them up to the level of everyone else. You don't bring everyone down to their level. You don't then cripple the rest of society just so like they don't feel like they're. Uh, being discriminated against or, or like it's unfair to them yeah it's like oh you're experiencing poverty okay well we'll all experience poverty so that you don't feel bad <laughs> right, right. experiencing poverty right and, and, and it sounds like a joke like well that's not what's being proposed but that but is like, what's being proposed with like if you look at the nuclear families and how they want to disband nuclear families or like make it so that it's you know it's more acceptable to live in a village that is exactly what's being proposed it's like okay look and it's nothing against the village. And I think we've talked about this a few times already. And mm -hmm. also just real quick, not being against gay people, trans people, but what's being done in our society is we're programming people to be that when they're not. Yeah. And if you don't think that's th like, when you have kids, you'll see how children are programmed from birth to be something that they're not. Yeah. Everything is programming them to be something they're not fundamentally. So it's like even to learn a language, they weren't, they didn't have that in them. So whenever you're saying trans, all this stuff, you're programmed to think in certain ways. And then if you put the guilt factor in there by saying people are transphobic and all of this, then you're making it like, it's actually better to be trans than to not be. You see what I mean? Plus, if you get benefits from that and special status, like imagine I can go into a store and if somebody doesn't give me the service I want, like over the top beyond what you would normally expect, I can be like, make a big fit about it and be like, it's because I'm trans, isn't it? Oh, you just don't want to serve trans people and all this stuff. Right. So, so it's like, you're teaching people and you're teaching children to, to take on these characteristics when that's not what they would do otherwise. It's because it's way more rewarding, right? It's like, you're propping up. I, I mean, me as an individual, when I was a young, young, and even throughout when I was a young adult, like wanting to be an actor, the inherent point being attention. Right. I had a level of stability where I could direct myself enough to, to, to find where I'm supposed to be or what I'm supposed to be doing from my own accord. But the point is that child who was impulsed with a bunch of different stuff, but who found that getting attention and making people happy was the only way to survive. Like that was my thing, you know, get people smiling. It's like, okay, but now I'm seeing the things that get screen time, the things that people prop up are what? Dressing in a dress? fuck yeah, I'll do it. Like that, that doesn't mean anything to me. I'll do it if it makes people happy. That's my fundamental driver, right? So it's like, okay, dressing in dress, put on makeup, all that stuff. I, I say to people, I'm like, man, if I was born now I, with the same circumstances like that, I would definitely be a girl. Would definitely, definitely, definitely be a girl. You know, that, that brings up a really great point. Uh, when Dave Chappelle, before he quote unquote went crazy, went to Africa, right? To smoke crack, right. apparently. So uh, crap. Wow. That's really what, what they I didn't hear that one. I didn't hear that one. Huh? Oh, well, here in the States, uh, you know, when he went to Africa from turning down this like great deal from uh, what was it? Comedy Central. 
Mm -hmm. the rumor that was put out was he's going to smoke crack in Africa. Right. And he has a whole whole bit on it as well. Where He's like, okay, if I was going to smoke crack, I just stay in New York. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Would I leave like crack central over here to go to Africa where you can't even find that shit? Like, come on, let's, let's be serious. (laughs) Um, But uh, prior to that, he had an interview on Oprah and he was saying, you know, basically along the lines of, isn't it weird that they want every male lead role to put on a dress at some point? Black men. Yeah, especially black men. Yeah. yeah. And he's like, I'm, I'm not doing that. Like, why do all of our black superstars, why do they all have some scene where they're in a dress? And I was thinking about just from what you were saying, Asif, like, you know, if you're trying to get into like this fame, if you're trying to get into this role of like, yeah, I, I want people to know my name. Oh, that guy wears a dress. I, I could wear a dress. I can do that. I could be funny and wear a dress. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to put myself in those positions. And then it's like, you'll, you'll do it on a much smaller scale. Even if you're not getting that big part, you'll do it to get the audition, to get, you know, this, uh, you know, just on, on stage just like in every little situation, you're practicing that thing because that's what the, what you saw the the superstar do. And you're like, that's how I get there. I got to keep practicing this bit or whatever. And then like you adopt that as part of your routine and I'm saying routine, but also like your routine of your life. You know, we all have routines that we have in our own lives that it's just, we adopt more and more and more of that. And we compromise ourselves so that we can fit into this role essentially so that we can basically get the the results that we want or get the feeling or whatever it is right and that's actually kind of survival yeah right and so then we would defend it as if it's our identity because it's so critical for our survival Mm. you see what i'm saying so it becomes a point it's like we try to put this emotional thing on it like it's a who I am, like you can't question that. But but if if there was no, sur- and this is the fun, this is the ironic thing about it. If none of us had to compete for survival, it wouldn't even really fucking matter anyways. Like there wouldn't, it, 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 again, it's not a fundamental point. Like I don't want there to exist men who wear dresses. It's that in a society where there is a program in place trying to weaken society and weaken all competition on purpose so that we can literally have for back of a letter term global techno communism. I mean, that's what it is. Like read that fucking agenda 2030 article. Yeah. Like they said, you won't own anything. Yeah. Everything will be subscription. Even oh, you need a smoothie maker. Go ahead and order it. It'll be there in an hour. Yeah. But think about oh, this. Okay. Bread machine. Go ahead and order it. it. That'll take two hours. No, but Jess, I came up, I came up with the new technology. You don't even need to order it. All you have to do is give me permission to read your thoughts. And if you do that, I'll make sure the fucking thing comes there before you even realize you need it. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Like that is what was argued in the article that you have no privacy. There's no privacy whatsoever. Even your living room. At first it was hard for me to think that I wasn't gonna have privacy, but then I thought about how much easier it made my life. And I was willing to give up that privacy. And I, you know, no matter where I go, no matter what I do, there's no escape from it, but that's okay because all of our needs are met. And it that, said in there, it said in there, I just hope that they don't use it against us ever. What that's the what it fuck? said in the fucking article. Dude, this is that's like, so cr- man, like that was like the this was not a joke article. This is a real article. And it was, and it was, it was from a contributor Forbes. from the World Economic Forum. Right. Yeah, on Forbes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was just the the icing on the cake it was just they're literally not like, coming from like alex they're Chung. manipulating everything like they've got the yeah, pandemic nice. that it's, was getting prepared before they even had the pandemic all this stuff it's like whoa and you know you know how they wrote it it wasn't like imagine this future it was saying like this is what the people in the future will be saying read because when you read something you just start reading it right mm-hmm. and it's all like i wasn't it like that? Yeah. yeah, it was almost like someone's diary post in a way or something. Yeah, it was exactly how like I don't I don't remember if we went over this here, but it was exactly how that school made that slideshow for kids wearing masks. 
Oh, yeah. I, I wear my like, mask. I wear it to protect like, other people. Exactly. Like that. Where He's, even if you're just scanning through it, you're saying you're programming yourself with that. So two, two things on this. I saw um, Tim Pool uh, had someone on where he was explaining how when you go out to these protests or riots or whatever, they will have these, um, these callbacks where they'll say, um, like they'll shout out something like mic check and everyone has to shout back mic check, right? Or they'll shout out all cops are, and then everybody says, you know, all cops are bastards, right? Um, but it's like, it's making you complete the sentence or making you say it out loud in your own voice because then it, you know, rewires you to start thinking in that way, just kind of naturally. It's like, you're building those neural pathways, right? Mm -hmm. um, but also to this point, I remember when I was really into Reddit, like some years back, I would just go on Reddit all the time, spend all my day on Reddit and just like click through. And I just enjoyed reading the comments, you know, like, like the That's post the itself, part would, it, yeah. yeah, the post itself would be cool, but like reading the comments would be like the most fun part. Cause you'd get all these like bangers in there. Like, but I also noticed how, when I would read through those comments, it would persuade me in some way. It would like, I would start thinking this is how people think. And you know, this is a legitimate opinion. And I would start thinking in that way as well as I was reading through the comments. And it took me a while to take a step back and go, hang on, I have no idea who wrote this. Could be like, you know, a four-year-old or, you know, practically speaking, could a, be a 15 bot. Could be a could bunch of bots from- Yeah, Rock. could be a company. Like I started seeing, um, cause it was something else that had alerted me to it was, oh, this is a, a paid company, pays for these people's accounts who have racked up all this karma. And then they start going in there and just making their own comments. And so you start thinking they're just a normal person and they're trying to persuade you to buy their product. And I was like, holy fucking shit. Wow. So, okay. That's really kind of what helped me to take a step back from Reddit. It was like, first off, I knew I was addicted. And second, it was like, oh, this is like a manipulation. This is like going on in my own brain and I'm allowing it. I need to stop this. Um, but yeah, did you, so. did you notice, oh, well, I don't know if you noticed this, but during the 2016 election cycle, that's when I started to really see the bias in Reddit. Cause it was like, if you went into anywhere in like the, our politics and you mm -hmm. said something that was like pro Trump, they would just destroy you. And they'd be like, this isn't, this isn't some pro Trump Reddit, you know, this is all about biased, you know, unbiased everything. But then anything that was like Russian collusion, anything like that, it would be like top of the thing, all upvoted everything. And then I started noticing too, Katie pointed this out, how they were super pro-vaccine on Reddit. Like if you, that's, anything that's what that me. was like questioning vaccines at all yeah. was like, oh, fucking idiot, doesn't yeah. believe science. It was like, they would just, everyone would come. It would seem like literally everybody on Reddit was totally on board with that. That's, that's what the way to get me out. Was. Yeah, yeah. It was, so it was before the Trump thing. It was like, I was seeing a whole bunch of like, they had uh, videos of celebrities talking about vaccines and everything. And I was like, no, nah, I don't agree with this. And, and I remember making some kind of post about like um, how you should use sea salt rather than table salt. Cause well, it's just something that like I had learned about and there, and there were so many comments on that. What is this fucking conspiracy theory shit? Or yeah. Whatever? Yeah. Like, Oh no, no. That like, there's nothing wrong with table salt. And I'm like, but hang on, hang on. <laughs> Like if you have a pool with salt water versus a pool with just chlorine, you can say it's the same thing because, you know, they do create the same, uh, I guess, chemical bonds, right? But you know the fucking difference when you jump into a chlorine pool versus a salt water pool. If you've ever had the privilege, I highly recommend salt water pool, much better. <laughs> this, this part of uh, the podcast. <laughs> yeah. But that, that kind of stuff, started me down the path of like mm. but that could have been morton's do you could see what i'm saying been, fucking yeah. on there with paid bots to look for anything that was imagine if you had a company where you could get a subscription like a company could subscribe to your service and you would have certain search teams that would go into your database that would always alert you if th that would affect this company that's cool 
And then you could go in and direct the bots and you were like highly trained to do it into like, when I say bots, I mean, you're just like commenting on different accounts to then defend that particular part of the argument on behalf of that company. Yeah. And like, you don't think that that's happening? It's like, for sure happening. Somebody would have thought of that and is doing it. Circling back to uh, the definitions of, of black, I had pulled it up. Oh yeah. There was one that uh, when Mitchell was talking about the outrage culture, black marked by anger or resentment or hostility. There you go, mm-hmm. black culture. So what Mitchell was talking about wow. before the, he did a little bit when we started, but before the podcast, you were mentioning about how it is propagated from, for example, Bernie Sanders and, and different people like that of saying, like you, you have to stay, stay angry. You have to stay mad, right? That's what you're saying. Stay outraged. Yeah. Stay outraged. Yeah. Right. It's like, that's black culture. Yeah. Not, not African-American culture. It's black culture. White <laughs> supremacy isn't pushing African-American culture out and wanting everybody to assimilate into white culture. White culture is pushing out anger, resentment, and hostility and wanting everybody to not be angry and not be resentful and not being and, hostile. And, Holy shit, I'm a white supremacist. And, and here's the thing. <laughs> exactly. People will react to that because they think you're saying that people, black people look like me are better than everybody else. And that's right, not right, what's right. being said because not it's the way skin. language is being manipulated. Yeah, exactly. And and literally, when you go and look at the 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 articles and the things that have been that are being written from the side that's pushing these points, it's not even a side. We tend to think in terms of sides, but it's not a side. There's it's, not two yeah. sides. It's like, you know what I mean? Like there's not two sides of it. There's, there's the system and then there's common sense. That's all it is. So everything that benefits, just keep the system as is. That's what we're talking about. So when we say the side, it's just really that stuff. It just presents itself as the left, the side. So it's not, but it's not a real thing, but it's like, it's defining white as being on time for things. Like we talked about this before, being polite, you know, stuff like that. But then also at the same time saying it's people who are white skinned and it's their culture. And it's like trying to conflate everything and mix it all together. But it's also playing on the fact that due to all this propaganda, black people specifically in America have developed, not obviously every single person, but to a large part, a low self-esteem about being the color of skin that they are because, and it's not because anyone has formulated an argument and explained it to them. It's just like a constant impulse and that there's something wrong or that at least some people think there's something wrong with that. And what ends up happening is the people themselves begin thinking there's something wrong with it, but then internalizing it and then projecting it outward and thinking that other people think that. Yeah. But that's not by and large what's occurring. And then what happens is the culture, which is what you're talking about, if not African-Americans culture, I don't know why I say African-American. It's just the know, terms people right. fucking use, exactly. black culture. But it's like, how do you distinguish between the two? Hmm. People who look with, like have dark skin, okay? If they have a culture, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is um, behaviors that are not, supportive of everyone like having a stable environment like for example um if somebody how do i know what color their skin is in the like behind me is blasting music that's like fuck yo bitch kill you you know shit like that and my kids are playing outside and they're like blasting and it's like bass and everything why would you want your kids to list to be in that environment right now what does that have to do with the person's skin color nothing i don't know you'd be making an assumption that they're black okay but then what'll happen is it'll be turned around and somebody will say you're just being prejudiced because they're black no skin color and it's like i don't care what color that person's skin is i don't want to hear that music i don't want my kids to hear it do you see what i'm saying any more than i would think it was rational to blast fucking country music or something which i don't even listen to but i'm saying like it doesn't matter what it is. It's like you're you're kind of creating an environment that's not best for everybody. That's that's kind of imposing and, and obnoxious. So things like being obnoxious, like stealing shit, 
you know, not using grammar properly, um, not being on being time. proud of being uneducated. What? Not being on time. Not being on time, apparently. Also, so the, the real not point being able to practice delayed gratification. That's the other thing. But then is, it, the, the here's the really crazy part. This was put out by the African American History and Culture Museum. So like, yeah. then it's being conflated. It's like being reconflated with being black skinned. That's the problem. Is that it's like so fucking if, insane. If yeah. we're saying like, this stuff and you're thinking, whoa, they're racist because they're talking about black people. We didn't fucking talk about black people. We're not talking about people's skin color. Mm-mm. Exactly. We're, like we're not at all. Like when we're, when we just mentioned those characteristics of uh, uh, not using grammar correctly or, you know, like dressing a certain way, right? We're not talking about black people. If black people comes into your head, you're the fucking racist. <laughs> But it just shows how the brainwashing works. Exactly. Because what, okay, let me put it this way. You're a black person, okay? You're born into this world. You have white parents, okay? Wait, uh, I was with you until that part. Try to imagine, Drake, you're a black person, okay? (laughs) You're born with white parents, okay? (laughs) Do the white parents need to go, all right, we're white, our child is black. On Wednesdays, they'll say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we're going to do white culture. But on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, we're going to do black culture because our child is black and therefore that's their culture. Like, does that right, make right. sense? What right. does the culture have to do with the color of your skin? So, Or, are you saying, or is there something to do with it? Are you what saying you Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you wear a do-rag, you, uh, right, right, you right. got weights out in the lawn. <laughs> But you probably experienced that, Drake, of like, of that thing of like feeling like you're not black. And, and I mean, yeah. before, like, we all, talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Even before, sure. right? And Mela talks about that too. She's like, I feel like I'm wrong if I speak the way I do. I'm wrong if I. It's, it's the weirdest thing because it's like you're supposed to be part of this black community, right? Yeah. Black community, right? But where is this supposed black community? Right. right? And, and where are they? Uh, taking care of each other and actually doing what's best for each other mm. or for, for oh, anyone. Oh, so you're saying all black people just hate each other and they're not caring. Not saying that we're all individuals. That's what I'm saying. We are exactly. All, where's the white group that does like, that? Yeah, where's the white community? You're where's all the brown community, man. And, and you know, what's also well, actually, funny. I know like, where they are. I, I recognize that culture has a strong impact and that a lot of these things are actually the way things are in reality. But what we're arguing for is actual real individuality Mm -hmm. that transcends culture. But what I'm still having trouble understanding is the logic of race. uh, Race is a social construct. It's not genetic, right? According to the, the progressive mindset. But then why then, according to this logic, do all black people operate the same way and all white people operate the same right. way and, and why defend why it? isn't it that there's an equal mix just naturally of black people that act white and vice versa what yeah i mean and if that's not the case then how are you how are you able to come to the conclusion that black people are disadvantaged yeah hmm. because when a cop's beating someone up are they like looking at the culture of the person or the color of the skin according to the, the logic the color of the skin right so then what does that have to do with a person's culture do you see what i'm trying to say so like if i say hey all children should be able to read they're like that's not being literate that's just white supremacy that's white that's white way of thinking that's colonization yeah. thinking yeah. and it's like here here's here's the definition of black that that doesn't fit into okay number number six for the princeton open source dictionary having extremely unfortunate or dire consequences bringing ruin if you are, doesn't it, doesn't that make sense about why being able to read would be against black culture? And remember, again, we're not talking about the skin or people. We're talking about the culture that would bring ruin. Yeah. The culture that would have extremely unfortunate or dire consequences. In other words, when I went through this, Cameron, when you were sharing, uh, the different articles and things like that about why math is racist, why educating your child is racist in a certain way, like why all these obviously good things, regardless of the human being who is receiving it, 
are racist. And I read, and then I read this, these definitions. I'm like, okay, be, it's racist because it's removing black culture. I'm like, that only works if you're defining black culture, not as people who have a certain skin colors culture, which they're all different anyways. Caribbean culture is different from African culture, different from within Africa. There's so many different cultures, right? But that only works is if you're saying black culture is a culture that is uh, having extremely unfortunate or dire consequences, culture that is bringing ruin. If you're uneducated, it's fucking obvious that that would happen. And it's the exact point of how people say racism isn't just, you know, you're hating on a race. It's not just when you discriminate based on race. Y yes, it is. But what they're saying is that racism, that's, that's why Candace Owens can be a white supremacist. Right? It's because when they're saying that's racist, they're not saying you're discriminating a race. They're using some completely different fucking definition of black culture. Therefore, they're using a completely different. You're benefiting from a power structure. You're benefiting right. from education. You're benefiting from something. If you're yeah. not on the losing side of the equation, you're not part of black culture, which is another definition of it is yeah. harshly ironic or sinister. All of this is fucking harshly ironic. So I guess I'm part of black <laughs> culture, right? But you see what I'm saying? It's like, yeah, it, you're, it, you said it really well of like, they're taking all the definitions and the fact that people have no idea what the definitions of words are. And then just yeah. like, <laughs> it's like associate, it's like through association and then they exactly. use it when they want it here. But then what happens is, it's like, it's like if somebody said that's really dark and that was negative. And then I said, Hey, you have dark skin. And then suddenly they were like, Oh, I'm negative. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, those that are two perfect, different meanings of the word. Yeah, exactly. And what's kind of ironic since you're speaking of irony, I was just looking it up on Google. The, uh, <laughs> the word black actually gets its original mean the, you know, like the, not the etymology. Yeah. Etymology from old english all the way back to germanic so that that was well well kind of ironic <laughs> if you look at it if you look at it, the first definition of black right when we talk about black people we're talking about people the color black right but the color black means it you're not reflecting any light in other words if you have black hair your skin color is exactly the same color as your black hair and that's debatable because even your black hair isn't like completely black you know what I'm saying? Like how often do you see a black person who is com like, like completely black? If you are not achromatic, in other words, if you are reflecting any kind of light, then you're not black. It's a brand. Now it's a brand. Now it became a fucking brand. Well, I guess it was always kind of a brand. But it's the same thing as like people call me brown. Like what? Like there's, there's a difference in... Um, the idea of black versus what black looks like. And that's what's all being meshed together. And, and then the question is, how do you know if you're black? You don't. Think about it. Like, how do you know if you're black? Like, what if you're Ben if, Carson? I don't know. Like, are you black or not? That's what I want to understand. You're only black if other people, when other people tell you you're black. Yeah, you know, exactly. I, didn't know, exactly. I didn't know I was black Chelsea until people Handler, asked me remember if she said, the word. Chelsea Handler had to remind 50 cents she was he was black do you remember that because he didn't know clearly he would have been funny is if he said yeah i was so rich i forgot <laughs> <laughs> like think about it he kind of forgot for a moment oh wait oh yeah I, i'm black oh yeah okay i have to act like a victim oh okay yeah that's right i have to support joe biden now like what right like what even if you can say okay all of that stuff's bullshit it's like how does being black equal you have to vote for joe biden like, <laughs> you know it makes zero sense Kanye says it so nicely in his in his uh, Joe Rogan podcast. What do you say? He basically says like, how racist is that? That people would come to me and say, you know, I'm splitting the black vote, as if, first off, as if only black people listen to me. No white people right. would ever vote for me. That's racist. And second off, though, as if I'm their handler, as if I wow. have a say in like, I've you know, I'm corralling like I oh. The black people can't think for themselves. So Kanye, you have to do it for them. You know, you have to tell them how to do it. It's like, yeah. that's fucking racist. And it's true. And, you know, and again, to your point, as if like 
how do you know you're black? It's like, I've been called white so many times as a right. kid. As a kid, it was it was just all the time. Even as an adult. So you know, so how does so that white? Work? What does that mean? If how can you be white if you have black skin? I'm like, so, no, okay, you're so acting that, white. It's like it so. Matter then how about, do you know I'm you know, white? Yeah, exactly. So it doesn't matter the the police brutality. You know, <laughs> clearly they're looking at me and they're going, "Oh, he's a white guy. He's fine." You know, uh, like it, it's not based on skin. So why do we even have this Black Lives Matter? See, but then if you look at the, how everything's conflated, what does it come down to? Because a lot of people are saying, look, if you get pulled over by the police, uh, just um, act fucking normal. Don't act like an idiot, and then you won't be killed. And they're, it's like the argument's trying to be made like, no, no, as soon as the police see you're black, they just start immediately going to start shooting you. Mm -hmm. And it's like... Wait, I, that's true. Not, I've been shot several times. Every time I get pulled over, I get shot. That's that's how it works. Every single time. And Every it's like time. when I but when I talk to Avery, right? Who's black. He must get shot like, a lot. <laughs> you know, and it's like anybody. So so if you have a black person though that says, Well, I just do what a white person would do and I'm fine. It's like that's not acceptable. Yeah. It's like, oh no, you're it's like try, they try to find some way that that can't possibly be the reason why. And so what it comes down to, what i what I'm seeing is it's a don't tell me how to act and behave. I don't need to change anything about myself. I am perfectly good, 100% the way I am. You have no right to say there's anything wrong with me whatsoever. You are evil. You are a problem. You must change. You must do everything else. And even if common sense dictates that there's something specifically, not generally, but specifically that I'm doing that, that is not best, you are still not allowed to question that or challenge me on it whatsoever. So it's like if we say, hey, it'd be best for black women if they make sure that father's in the home and they develop a relationship with the father before they have kids and, you know, all these things, that would be best. Now, we know that's not going to change anything in terms of people's current situation, but let's stop promoting it like it doesn't matter. Mm. Let's stop acting like it doesn't matter. That's the problem. It's not about shaming anybody who's in the situation, but how would they ever know that they could change it if they never were told? Like, imagine how many people are just going through thinking, oh. I just was always thinking it should be. It's like, was it? It wasn't you, Drake. It was, maybe it was you. Somebody was talking about something. I can't remember what it was now, damn it. But it was something where it was like, I just never can. Oh, no, it was you specifically talking about getting married and having kids and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. And you were like, you just took it for granted. Of course, you wouldn't be married. Like, you would just maybe have a kid and raise it by yourself. Like, right. It was just like, of course. Right. And then until we started talking, you're like, oh. Okay, because then you start seeing things that it's like part of a vocabulary or an education process of like, oh, well, if, if I understood this, then suddenly that's all possible now. Yeah. Okay. And now it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So when people have a limited vocabulary, things are going to make sense that don't actually make sense. Hang on, because I really want to, I really want to stress that because that was such a huge turning point for me. Like I did take it for granted that like it was just not even possible to have children and raise them in a, in a nuclear family, in a nuclear home, like raise my child with their mother. I just automatically assumed that it was not possible. And because of my, my own upbringing and everything that I'd seen, it wasn't possible to me. And it was not something that I was ever even planning on. And I was planning already like, okay, I'm going to have kids, but that's not going to be a possibility. And through you sharing with me all of this and really just helping me to understand what I want for my children. Do, do I want what's best for my own children? That helped me so much and, and really taking me through this education process, right? Uh, where I could come to conclusions on my own because I understand it yeah, not because you're which, telling me. Which, which education process context-wise is not me telling you the answer. So it was just right. me like, well, why do you have to accept that thing you believe? So then you could take it and go look at it and question yourself right. and then come with, to a conclusion, Right. which is going to be the same as mine because if you're being honest with yourself and using common sense, that's how I came to the conclusion. It wasn't because someone imposed it upon me either. Right. Right. Because right. I had to question my upbringing and so forth. Right. And, and that's, that's what I really wanted to stress is that okay, you know, people might say you're being harmful by promoting what's best. It's like, no, I, I would have had a very shitty 
uh, outcome for my future children if I would have continued down that road. And I'm so glad there was someone like you standing up for, hey, this is what's best. And what you, you're considering right there, that's not best. Let me explain to you why and go look at these things so that I can come to the conclusion on my own. This is also another thing. I mean, this is what I really love about Techno Tutor just in general is that you come to the conclusions on your own. Nobody is telling you what to think. It's like, okay, use your Techno Tutor and then go look at this, then go investigate this. And then you can put the pieces together yourself. It's like, because there is a structure to reality, right? And so if you understand the structure, if you understand the rules of the game, you, you can play. You can like, put these things together yourself as opposed to, I have to tell you every single time, this chess piece moves in, in this way. And, and you can move it here or you can move it there or like, and then basically I'm playing the game for you. That's, that's not reality. Like, what if the reason why, you know, in that suggested Congress bill, you're saying same-sex couples are more subject to poverty? Uh, but apart from that, like, what if the reason why uh, transgendered are more discriminated against or they're having a harder time of life is because they're not factoring in reality? That's why any of us have any problems in life is because we're, we can't properly align the rules in our mind to the rules of how the world actually works. Like if you think, oh, the way you make money is like you take a course online and then you like just keep trying online and just run your business from behind your computer, then you'll be able to travel the world and be happy and all that stuff. Like it's not going to work. Does that mean that everybody should change their courses and we should change the, you know, like the way uh, uh, people give information to you as in they should just do it for you when you pay a course? No, it doesn't make any fucking sense. As in the problems that why anybody listening to this, the problems that you're having in your life, the reason they happen is because you don't understand how reality works. You don't understand how the world that we live in right now, the rules of it, right? And so because you can't operate within it, that's why you're not happy. The other part of it is, yeah, the, also the system is like making sure you're not happy. But I mean, just simply put, it's like if you're jobless and you think that that's going to bring you freedom or something, like not having any kind of responsibility or anything like that, you'll just realize you're just going to keep being depressed. Just like that guy who spent two years on a beach. You're just like, oh, fuck, this is not the thing that I thought it was. That's what's not being factored into the equation if you're believing in a bunch of shit that isn't real. Just like Cameron said, there will be things, if your education is all fucked up, there will be things that make sense to you that don't actually make sense because you can use logic for anything. But that doesn't mean it's common sense. In other words, my logic could be Drake is evil Therefore, you know, we should get him off this podcast because he's evil. That's logic. But Drake's actually a pretty cool guy. And he's not evil. And so when you're starting assumptions are wrong, then that's when you fuck everything up. So for example, if you're starting assumption is male, female, doesn't fucking matter. Like, that's just how it is. The thing that really hit me, what Jessica said was, I never considered how the kids today, you know, Desmond is amazing. When he grows up, well, the way I'm thinking about it is if he grew up into this world where you have to go out and get a job and make money and do all the things, all those things and have harmonious relationships with people, how the fuck is that gonna go? Now, by the time, you know, the young eight-year-old drag queen or whatever, you know, uh, or... also, doesn't he get all of his sense of identity by other people looking at him? Mm -hmm. Basically, he prostituting himself. I'm not even trying to go there, although that's true. But what I'm saying is, it's like his apparent identity and, and who he is is just some kind of display for other people. So, if nobody's praising him, telling him how amazing he is, then what, what does he have? 
Nothing. Like, honestly, do you think he's walking down the street and people are like, you weird gay trans kid, get out of here, die. Like, no one's fucking doing that. <laughs> but if I don't say, wow, what an amazing free expression of a child, that's considered hate. Like, why, why am I not allowed to have the freedom, let's just say, devil's advocate of saying like, I don't like that expression. That's weird to me. That doesn't make sense. But isn't that what like the kind of feminine gay man is known for? Of like, ew, like that does not look good on you. <laughs> hey, it's, that's a great it's kind of like the most judgmental fucking personality you can have. <laughs> and and so it just shows you like none of this is real. None of this is actually what it seems like. It's it's all at the end of the day, if you just remove all of the there's like some elite point of people like kind of utilizing all of this to kind of maintain control of things. It's everybody's just pursuit of competition. And all you care about is winning and, and getting energy within yourself and that's it and just trying to survive. But how many of these discussions are like, it's like there's these weak people in society and they just need us to like make them feel safe and secure in our world. But none of those discussions really fundamentally are like, look, what does everybody need? Let's make sure we have all of that taken care of. Let's get that done. And then let's look at the other points. You know, because isn't there like poverty in China? <laughs> isn't there like suffering in China? Or is it like a total fucking utopia there? Because there's no, I mean, basically it's all like Chinese looking people. Mostly it's like vast majority is like Han Chinese. It is. A sad place. It is. You know what I'm saying, though. What but you would think? You would think, though, it's it's a perfect utopia, right? Because yeah, yeah look the same, right? There's no race. Everyone looks the same. There's mm -hmm. obviously no discrimination there. Like you never hear about any of that. It wasn't it like used to be like everyone was like, dude, the human rights in China is just fucking insane, right? Do you think any of that's fundamentally changed? No. <laughs> nope. Probably and yet now you don't hear any of that anymore. It's all like, no, actually America, it's, everyone's just getting They're killed like, whoa, in the streets whoa, whoa, every day. And yeah, like, wait, wait, stop talking about how bad China is. That's what we're trying to implement here. Stop it. <laughs> is it like, is it like 10 years ago, th these weren't problems? <laughs> or is it like they became problems in our imagination? What do you mean? Say it again. You know what I, you know, I was thinking too? What, what I mean is like racism. Oh, right. 15 years ago, 10 years right. ago, like it didn't seem like a big deal. It seemed like. Yeah, fucking people are racist. Like, <laughs> yeah, just like whatever. Like, yeah, it's just how it some, is. Right? Some, a very small but it wasn't like the biggest deal in the fucking world. It was like, yeah, I mean, you know, people need to stop being racist. It's like there, there are white supremacists who are like in like these little crevices of society. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, fuck them. They're assholes. Like, actual. But hold on. But what is a white supremacist? Like, like I'm talking about specifically like, uh, like, Everyone else is less than, and we should treat them less than because of the color of their skin. My race is supreme. But aren't there like openly now in the mainstream people who are like, white people are trash. That's They're true. terrible. They need to all stop being white and just go away. Wow. I was told. So like, you know, like that whole thing where you're saying like, though, there's what? I was told that walking down the street of Minneapolis downtown, Man. people were just talking about how because because now that there's no business people down there it's just all a bunch of hooligans running around pretty and, much downtown and, and also just for anyone listening like i don't know if you'll trust me or believe me but i don't feel anything internally about like oh this is not fair to white people like white people need to stand up or any of that kind of stuff i don't feel as a white person that I'm under attack, I don't have any of those feelings. I don't feel oppressed or anything. It's not about that. It's just that I see where the logic of all of this is going. And I wanted to make this point too, because I think this is really important. Imagine, it's like, what are we actually giving consent to? If I say, okay, trans people, LGBTQ, they're so oppressed. They're, they're victims of hate speech and all these things. So we're all like, guys, we can't be like that. We're better than that. Okay, let's, you, everything you should, you say should go through a filter and Facebook should check to see if you're saying something transphobic or not. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah. And then it seems like, Hey, cool. We're getting there. Right. And then mm -hmm. one day they go, you're only allowed to say these things. And it's got nothing to fucking do with trans people, LGBT, nothing. It's like, you can't say toothpaste without fluoride is bad for your health because that's anti Colgate or whatever the fuck it is. Like, like everyone gets to send Facebook their list of things they don't want you to say about your country, your company. And guess what? Who do you go appeal it to? Facebook. <laughs> you don't get to go to the U.S. government because like, oh, no, they they gave up all of their rights to the United Nations Council on fact checking. Do you know what I mean? Like, and it's not even those people are not even elected. They're just appointed or by the fucking companies that created the, the World Truth Foundation over here. You can and back it's just that the fucking up. Colgate and fucking what? You can back that up just a little bit and just go, OK, no hate speech. Right. And then. All right. Uh, you can't say, um, you know, trans is bad or anything like that. And then you can just back it up to where we're at right now. You can't even use the word sexual orientation, right? Not so, allowed to say, was it orientation or preference? Yeah, it was orientation. Preference. Oh, preference. You can't say preference. Yeah. Preference. Sorry. You can't say preference. Right. So like, all right. So a week ago, preference was fine. Now preference is bad. Even where though preference doesn't imply choice. Right. Is right. it because they think it, you don't have a choice? They think it's because it right. implies choice and you don't have a choice. But preference doesn't imply choice. Yeah. Preference could be like, like, dude, I fucking hate peas. Like, right, but I fucking hate onions. There you go. I don't want to, and, I, and I've worked on it and I don't have a fear of them. Like if there's onions in my food, it's not a big deal. Yeah. But I still don't prefer them. Right. And I'm like, what's the point of changing like it? I'm not, I don't impose it on my family. I don't yeah. impose it on anybody else. Yeah. Like, I don't prefer onions. If I came right. over to your house and you had onions in the food, I wouldn't say anything. I would just eat it and I'd be polite. You know, if you're my friend, I might be like, hey, by the way, I don't prefer onions. If I'm coming over, do you mind if we don't have onions? Is it a big deal? Yeah. And you I, probably wouldn't care. You'd be like, sure, I'll make shit without onions. Who fits the fuck? You know what I mean? I, I cooked for you and it had onions in it. And you were like, okay. <laughs> yeah, but my point is, it's a preference. Right. I don't prefer onions. Right. I don't think it's a fundamental choice I made maybe somewhere it is maybe maybe genetically my body doesn't like onions it's not best for my body and that comes up as a preference and i don't know where it comes from i haven't been able to figure that one out but at yeah. the end of the day is it creating a deficiency okay i need to look at that is there a problem you know what i mean am i causing am i getting everyone else to fucking not have any onions anywhere in the in the country because i don't like like Am I like, I'm such an oppressed person because every new restaurant I go to, everything's got onions in it and I can just never find any. And I'm so oppressed and I need to have like a fucking ramp that's like not in the shape of an onion because I it may trigger me or some <laughs> shit. You know, it's like- the textbooks. <laughs> yeah, and the textbooks need to talk about the oppression of un onion phobics and all this sort of shit, you know? And it's like- It never nudes. <laughs> I don't know how we got on that random topic. I feel like you were saying something, Jake. Yeah, yeah, I was saying something. Uh, basically like- <laughs> We can Never see needs. the obviousness of it. Yeah, you got to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you can see the obvious of it with just that of like going from uh, preference to orientation. And then now orientation is going to be the next thing where they no, you can't say that anymore. And then like, because it, it's too close to like the Orient and, and that's racist. And you know, huh. or, or it like kind of somehow it implies a choice, you know, but it's like, okay, think about it. That's why I was saying like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it didn't seem like racism was a big deal. It's not right. that no one thought there wasn't racism. Right. It's just, it was individual people being assholes. That's yep. how you thought about it. Like you're a fucking racist, stop being racist. Okay. But now it's suddenly become this big thing. Cause it's like, they keep moving the language and eliminating what you're not allowed to talk about and what you are. And certain things you are not supposed to say, and you're supposed to feel a certain way and everything to the point where now we're at the point in this whole point where sexual orientation is no longer, or yeah. preference is not allowed to be said. Yeah, but I also want to add in there as well, because there is this social conditioning that happens in schools and in homes as far as, yeah, that's an individual racist, but then the, like, I know for certain, you know, in the black community, um, there's like this conditioning of, they're, those people are always racist. Like they don't even know it, but they're always racist. And so like, you just kind of believe that. And then when you're in school, there's that feeling of um, you're going through your textbooks and you feel like you identify with, well, at least for myself, you identify with the, the slaves or those who are oppressed because they have the same skin color and not, not everyone oh. in your class has that same skin color. And so like, 
like I remember for myself, I felt embarrassed on some level, or I felt ashamed. That that's a better word, ashamed. Even though it had nothing to do with me, nothing to do with my family, nothing to do with like anyone that I know in particular, but I still felt ashamed. And also the other kids in the class would look at me as if to say like, what are your thoughts on this? Like, this is you, this you're being represented here. And that's a, a great case against the socialization or like going to school, right? Where there's that conditioning and that happens today in a much worse scale. I, I've got to admit, I've been seeing the the things that kids are working on in school and in their virtual schools and everything. I see their classes. It is way worse now than it was before. And before it was bad. So yeah, before it was this like individual thing, like, yeah, that person's an asshole. That person's a racist, but there has been this conditioning in the making a hundred percent of it is something that is much greater than just an individual person. And it's like spreading like, or, you know, there's nothing that, uh, any individual can do about it because you're just inherently racist. But it's insane. total and it's totally insane. Yeah. This whole point, you know, and it's like, what's fascinating to me is when you look at the social media aspect of it, all of the programming that's being done can then be measured. Do you see what I mean? So it's like, whatever we programming in the schools, then there's a way to now measure it by what people are talking about and what they're clicking on and so oh, forth. Wow. Yeah. So I guess going back to the point we were talking about earlier, it's like, we're, it's like a Trojan horse. That's how I see all of this. Okay. It doesn't mean I don't care about people. It does. I, I want everyone to fundamentally have everything that they need and that they prefer as long as what they prefer is not in a real tangible, measurable way, harming anyone else. Right. And you can measure that. It's not like you have to be based on someone's opinion. If someone is gay in an ideal world, that's not a thing that like, just think about it for a moment. You're not trying to make it so that other people are gay. You're just gay. And there's another gay person and you want to have sex. Who cares? You see what I mean? Like, so what? If you like fucking Dungeons and Dragons, not fucking it, but if you like Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> <laughs> you want to go play that. It's a thing you want to do for fun and you like doing it. Now, people will bring in this whole love thing into the equation. Love is just a bunch of bullshit anyways. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And that's where you really start to fuck around because they go, well, if two people love each other, it's like, show me two people that love each other. Gay <laughs> or straight. It's all fucking bull. They don't love each other. They love their own fucking feelings yeah. about something it's mm -hmm. bullshit yeah. that doesn't mean you can't be in a relationship with someone and support them and build something together and i'm and i think and i know gay people can have that and straight people can have that so you can have that but when you start bringing children into the equation and now you have to realize that everything you say and do around them you know, it's like they say can will be used against you it's going to go into their programming and now you're programming gay people to be like we're so oppressed Da, 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 da. We need to fight. Da, da. You know, it's like your program all this extra stuff that has nothing to do with just the basic point that they're gay or trans or whatever it is. It, what does being gay have to do with being trans? It what does being gay have to do with being trans have to do with being black? It doesn't. But why are they all stuck together now? Social justice. But Duh. at the end of the day, what is it about being trans? that you're being oppressed about is it that there's so many people just walking around being like you're trans weirdo hitting you and bullying you because when i was looking through like all these things of like what are what are hate crimes against trans people it's like bullying harassment violence da, da, da. i'm like that's just normal crimes those are normal crimes <laughs> what's the extra part that has to do with you being trans yeah and it was interesting because it was like i was looking at this one thing it said in terms of law enforcement, police anti-trans hate crimes. So it's like police crimes against trans people. It was saying how that police are traditionally, the police represented male officers as traditionally masculine, powerful, and tough. Mm -hmm. But it's also been active in policing the gender of others. This has been historic. This has historically meant that cisgender women have been treated as vulnerable and weak while men who fail to conform to the male masculine type have often been criminalized, brutalized, and violently disposed of. Disposed of? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like but just eliminate men who are 
transgender so who don't conform to the male thing have been brutalized by by police what what are you gonna say i'm curious are is it acceptable to say that men who are transgender have the strength of men can can we say that can we say uh, that on air i can say it but i don't know if it's politically <laughs> correct <laughs> yeah but, but I, I remember watching this video uh from I guess from Portland or from Seattle, one of those, where uh, this transgender woman, whatever, uh, a uh, man is a man transgender to a woman, right? Um, he, <laughs> she, sorry, <laughs> I don't know how to play this game. Uh, was so strong, they took down three cops. Like three <laughs> cops were on them like trying to hold him down and just like rip through him like no problem like, you're tell me that guy Dude, was that would be hold on that would be an amazing comic a superhero that was like some weak frail man that their superpower was they transform into this beast woman <laughs> and it's like trans man and they like fucking like fight people and shit but it's like so everything's like all backwards <laughs> hold on but what i was gonna say is why are black men not trans men, but black men brutalized by police. Ah, man. Uh, let's see. They don't conform. Let's say that. I, I'm you saying say, of, of those who are brutalized, they are not following the rules most of but, the time. But I would argue that they're, they're more masculine. Oh. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, okay, well, think well, about... As in more aggressive? Like more masculine traits as, a, as in aggressiveness? I mean, that could be part of it. Aggressiveness, sort of speaking your mind, like not backing down, like don't fucking tell me what to do, like whatever. Okay. You see what I mean? Yeah. Like the stereotype that people have of black men. What yeah. is the stereotype? They're aggressive, for sure. Like, but they're, but they're Loud. almost hyper-masculine. Yeah. You see what I'm trying to say? Like think of like your Denzel, I'm not, well, he's not hyper-masculine, but it's like a good way of what I'm trying to say. Like Denzel Washington, uh, I was gonna say Will Smith, not his real life personality, but like his kind of character, you know, it's like masculine. It's not feminine. I, I would say as far as like uh, stereotypical black guy, 50 cents a better. Well, that's even better more representation. extreme. That's yeah. even more extreme. I'm just thinking like famous black men. But, right? but, that's, not, but that's hyper masculine. But you're saying, but they're not feminine. For sure. They're, they're muscular, they're athletic, they're strong. Like that, that's the things that when you think of the typical male black man, um, as a celebrity kind of figure, it's more masculine or hyper masculine or, you know, on the masculine side. Yeah. So the idea that trans people, men who are trans, who therefore are technically, and according to their logic, women are brutalized poli by police because they're men who act weak like women. And that's why they're being brutalized. You see what I'm saying? By the police. Yeah, because their expectation no is it's because men should be like men. That's why we're gonna beat your little gay ass up. That's what they're acting like. But then, okay, how does that apply to why police brutalize black men? Because I don't think anyone's thinking that the one, like the one thing you don't think about black men is that they're just like weak, effeminate. That's not the thing that you normally would think of if you're looking at stereotypes. A hundred percent, no. So the reason Who's why they brutalize brutal? black men, though, that's because they're racist. Like, oh, that's just because they they don't like black people's skin color or something. Like, because they all they're in they're insecure or something. And it's like, why do police exist? To protect property. So the reason why police are doing anything is because the law says if somebody does X, Y, or Z, you're supposed to go and stop them, or you're not getting your paycheck. Yeah. Now. If you put someone like that in that into power who's totally fucking mental and shit and like wants to just take their grudges out and secures on other people, that's not a good thing either. Right. But that's not even the argument that's being made now. Because <laughs> clearly, if you have if you're gonna have police, which at this moment we need them, then you should not let those people get police. Like there definitely should be something done about that. But that's not really what the argument is, is it? The argument isn't, oh yeah, there's a few bad apples. No, they're like, no fundamentally police itself policing is systemically racist and structurally blah 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 so that like when i'm making the argument i'm always going to that point not the like obvious common sense point 
You see what I mean? So when you look at it from that perspective, how do you have the, the police are brutal against trans men because they are weak, effeminate and more like women according to their, their stereotype. But then why are they brutalizing black men? It's just none of it is internally consistent whatsoever. Mm-hmm. And then the problem with it is why I bring it up is because when you look at the laws that are being passed, like we're talking about, there's no way they can be applied consistently. Hmm. All that will happen is it will cover things up and then nothing will change and things will get worse. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So then it's like, well, it's like with gun laws, right? Same thing. We have to ban this kind of gun because, you know, people use it to mass murder people or whatever. And then when you actually go and look at the num- the, um, the largest percentage of gun crimes is with handguns. And it's like, okay, so what's going to happen is they're going to ban those. It's literally not going to change the gun crime statistics. And then what are they going to say? Well, it's still in pro- a problem of ec- epidemic proportions. We need to now ban the handguns as well. It's like, yeah, that's that's what you wanted to do the whole fucking time. Yeah. So, what is it that the corporations want? Consumers, sheep, basically people yeah. who just yeah feed yeah. off of them. Never talk shit about our products. Never do any laws that would ever limit anything we do, and just buy our shit and don't ever question it, right? Mm-hmm. So when we're trying to argue for like, oh, we got to protect trans people and regulate speech because of it, what you're actually arguing for for the end result of it is this point. Because at the moment, who controls what laws are written? Politicians. Politicians. And who puts them into office, generally speaking? The people elect them. No, the corporations. Oh. (laughs) Generally speaking. We're about to find out. We're about to find out in like Hmm. a couple days. Well, probably the day people are listening to this, if they listen to the day we release it. We're going to find out because the people are going to elect Donald Trump. That's a fact. (laughs) Now, people are going to vote for Joe Biden. Yeah, but they're not voting for Joe Biden. They're voting for some imaginary set of feelings that have been associated with Joe Biden through some kind of marketing. 100%. Because the guy's a fucking asshole. Nobody cares about Joe Biden. Nobody likes Joe Biden. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. They're just, it's like, like that example one of you gave about him talking with the kid that stuttered and all this shit. Yeah. It's like, dude, if the president of China has a stutter and Trump's like, you weak stuttering bitch, give me a better deal on this trade thing. And then it works. I'll be like, fucking make fun of his stutter. I feel like, <laughs> who gives a fucking shit? <laughs> like, no, we should. It's like, if the guy's short, you know, like he made fun of like Kim Jong-un, uh, Kim Jong-un, ill, which one ever is it? I can't fucking remember. There's so many Kim Jongs. <laughs> Whichever one it is, Kim Jong Un, Kim Jong Uno. That's good. Or actually, he's dose because the other one was whatever. But my <laughs> point is, it was like he called him like Little Rocket Man. Yeah. <laughs> when I was when we when I was growing up, I mean, you guys are a little bit younger than me, but maybe I don't know if you relate to this or not. But it's like that was always not a total everyday constant thing, but it was a lot of times. It was like oh, North Korea is testing nuclear weapons and are testing their ballistic missiles. And it was like, oh, fuck, what are they going to do? You know, that's just not a thing anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying it was because that one thing Trump said, but like he knows how to fucking play the game. You know, it's also funny when you said when you were growing up, it just reminded me, uh, I I didn't, I thought you were going to go somewhere else with it. Mm. It reminded me that like in other countries, especially in, spanish-speaking countries um it's like totally normal to comment on the way somebody looks and that be a descriptor of them you know like oh yeah like like it's and it's like no the short guy you know you know shorty you know the short guy or you know the black guy you know like whatever it is it's like people just that's how people talk about each other and it's like that's your nickname. That's who you become in those cultures. Um, it's just, I feel like in our culture, we've made it such a big deal to be PC where it's like, oh, you can't say anything remotely near that. Whereas even, you know, the president who's from, you know, uh, an earlier time where I'm pretty sure that would be the norm, you know, where you just like, yeah, the Chinese guy, the little rocket man, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, and I, I could see why, you know, as a society, we shift, we change, sure. But also, like, who cares if he gets the job done, right? Like, at the end of the day, if 
if this guy is protecting me and I just don't like the way he talks versus like, if, if I have, you know what he said the other day though, he said something really cool too. He said, um, it was in one of his rallies or something. I think it was in a rally. He said, he said, I'm, I'm putting America first. Yeah. It's like, I think other countries like their leaders should put their countries first too. Yeah. He was like, America first doesn't mean everybody else last. It means America first and you should put your country first too. Yeah. Like, so that's when we talk about best for all, it doesn't mean sacrifice. Right. It doesn't mean putting anybody last. It, that's why we keep saying like, okay, let's go back to what does everybody need? Let's, let's get that taken care of. Let's get everybody moving forward. Yeah. That's important. It's not about one race or the other. And the problem with all the social justice is it's, it's like white people just live in heaven. Fuck them. Okay. But it's so obviously pandering. Yeah. It's so obviously like, okay, let's look at who feels right now the most victimized. Take a survey. Yeah. And you're like, oh, what a coincidence. I just found out X, Y, Z and uh, F groups are the most victimized people on the planet. And like, you know, everything's been designed in this system to be totally not to your benefit. And everyone else has it great. Of course, those people are going to be the most angry and so forth. So you just tested to see who's the most fucking angry. Yeah. That, that's a cool juxtaposition of like um, Black Lives Matter. If you say, well, all lives matter. Well, black li- all lives can't matter until Black Lives Matter versus America first. And all your country should be first too. You should put your country first, right? Like that's, that's a big difference. It's saying, hey, we all matter. We all like should be having the best versus no only us and fuck all you guys until we get ourselves situated like that's really what black lives can't matter until all lives matter that's what i'm until saying all until all life matters you see what i mean it's like until every until the value of life itself is the fundamental thing that unites everything you can't have any real discussion about equal rights or anything because what is it that you're granting the rights based on and right now the political discussion is just how it's it's identities that make you feel a certain way which are nine times out of ten based in trauma where does black identity come from in this country as in slavery yeah yeah because i mean it's it it comes from the identification with that yeah that doesn't mean that every single person every single black person is a descendant of slaves yeah and then that's kind of a basic assumption too isn't it yeah it's it's, it's like how clearly do you know not the case when their parents came over here or whatever yeah which yeah it's obviously not the case yeah right but the point is it's like you we're, we're trying to pretend like we're creating solutions but it's all that's happening is people are selling ideas based on how you feel rather than looking at the real actual practical common sense so like this equality act when i look at it all it does is make it feel like something's being done. Hmm. But all it's really doing is taking something that's imaginary and adding it into the equation. Because before it's like protections based on some kind of physical disability or even a mental disability can be a real thing because it's physically in your body, chemically and so forth. But disabilities, you can't discriminate based on that. You can't discriminate based on someone's age, someone's race, someone, you know, which is like their physical makeup of their body or their, their sex. Those are all real things. Imagine, imagine, imagine you were in the role of getting the couple of people in wheelchairs who are really angry that the world is not catered to people in wheelchairs and then promoting the fuck out of them. And then finding some, getting footage. Like imagine that was your job. And then you'd have to get footage on like people like bullying somebody in a wheelchair and then eventually get it to the point where you can get into policy. Everybody has to travel in wheelchairs now. And anybody who steps out of their wheelchair, you can be arrested for it. And then your job is to like get famous people to like take pictures of themselves in wheelchairs. And like now it's like grown ups for or like Oceans 18 is like, they're all in wheelchairs. And that was like your world to like, like permeate society yeah. with like a new idea of, hey, if you're standing, you're a fucking asshole. Yeah. And, and like you, you have like celebrities who adopt children 
and they're like oh i didn't realize they were actually disabled and then like they make them like fucking wear casts and like yeah. that's what's happening and then like, the kid's gonna be like dude you just adopted me from some fucking orphanage in haiti and now i get to live in fucking beverly hills i'll wear the dress man i don't give a shit yeah like yeah. <laughs> and what are they gonna do anyways if the, if the kid says something the, the parent's gonna be like you shut the fuck up you are a girl don't let anyone take that away from you you are you're just confused you're confused right now yeah it's like their parents so they're not gonna well, question it. that was the whole thing i remember south park you know they made so much fun of of everything but that was one thing about uh, coming out of the closet and all that stuff. Oh, oh, it was Butters. Butters got sent to – Butters is one of the characters in South Park. And they're trying to like – he didn't realize it, but he was, he was – he went to like a church camp or something. But they're just trying to tell him like he's – Oh, yeah, I remember that one. And yeah. he was confused about something else. I don't know. He didn't understand why he was there. Exactly. He's like, I'm just confused about what's going on. He's like, he's like, we understand. It was like to You're rehabilitate confused. like yeah. homosexuals and – Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Their parents thought he was homosexual, and so they were, <laughs> he was there to the rehabilitate conversion. them. Conversion? <laughs> huh? huh? They sent him to like a homosexual. It was like a gay conversion camp. camp. Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. And so he's like, I just feel so confused sometimes. They're like, it's okay, it's okay that you feel confused. That's what we're here for. And see, and they I- feel like really good about, oh, I'm doing the right thing for my. You know, I mean, obviously in that case they try to convert him, but you still have the parents who are like. But you see how it's the same thing, confusion? What is confusion? What's the definition of confusion? The definition of confusion is lack of understanding. And understanding is to perceive the intended meaning of words. Yeah. Yeah, so you don't have the words part of you, so you can't actually make meaning. Exactly. It makes so much sense. It's like, okay, let's fuck up all the words, tell people they're confused, and that everyone's... It's because of societal pressure that you want to be a boy. Do you ever feel like because you were assigned at birth? You, you know how like you would always have this. I'm sure you guys can relate to this. Like old people are always like, I don't understand the youth these days. You know that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like we're experiencing that effect in real time. Yeah. Because things are moving so fast with the internet. Like then it'd be like, I just don't understand these kids and their rock and roll. You know, because they were right. like seeing that it like was changing society and it was trying to make things so people were more rebellious and more distrusting of whatever whatever the thing was right but now you're seeing in real time it's like i'm only 36 and i'm like i don't understand these trans people these days and it's like but as soon as you get on board with that there's going to be the new thing but yeah. you do understand it though that's the difference i do understand it so yeah. but you see like see oh, there's saying, like yeah. some truth to that like people yeah. like, literally couldn't relate to what the fuck was going on for sure but but what i'm what i really see though is it's all just engineered and that doesn't take away from the fact that people who are like trans gay uh any of these particular classes of people that are um getting the short end of the stick so to speak it doesn't take away from the fact that any of them aren't actually experiencing problems that's that's not even the point of what i'm trying to say it's just it's being used it it is a real thing that's happening but it's being manufactured and then that manufactured crisis is being used to try and create even more problems and so by the time we've given away all of our rights to anything to privacy property anything there will be nothing left and nobody will be happy everybody will be depressed there will be there won't they won't have anything to live for it'll just be like what like get up and take a drug and feel artificially good about something, but have no reason to exist whatsoever. Have no creativity, nothing. Huh? So this is why today or Tuesday, you know, November 3rd, or whenever you listen to this and you look on CNN or Fox news or wherever you're getting your news, and you're looking at the, at the elections and even what happens in the aftermath. This is why we have our political movement that we're discussing more and more and the principles that we stand by because this is where it's headed. Exactly what Cameron is saying. It's like, nobody's going to be fucking happy and we still have time to do something about it. So if there's any bit of life left in you, listen. Hit him (laughs) him with the, hit him with the name. Yeah. So the equal life party and we are here to bring some common sense into politics. And so you can look at our principles it's on the self-perfected website, self-perfected.com slash principles. And that's the platform. And you heard from this whole podcast and you'll keep hearing us come out with the content of what we stand for and our proposed solutions. But 
join it actually do something about it it doesn't fucking matter if you listen to this and you don't change so who are you right you're gonna have your grandkids one day if you have kids and they're gonna look at you and say what did you do in 2020 did you even care so so i guess that answers the question of like what do we do in the off chance biden wins we still got to create this uh or we still have to move forward rather exactly. same thing that we do if trump wins yeah. What, what do we do tonight, Pinky? Do you guys remember that from Animaniacs? <laughs> Try to take the world. Same thing we do every night, Pinky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What are we going to do today, brain? We try to become the 0.1% by using the power of 10 and through equalizing education. I think that's what he said, something like that. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So enjoy the election, guys. I'm going to wrap it up. I mean, I, I have to go. So I have a meeting I have to get to. But uh, you guys want to leave it at that? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think we, I think we probably covered Carry us all this way and then like oh no i've got to go <laughs> gotta go guys sorry bye <laughs> Deal with it. all yeah. right yeah uh let's wrap it up find us on self-perfected.com or uh on facebook uh in facebook group self-perfected join the group and share this you guys yeah. fucking share this <laughs> where else Thank do you, you hear this so. all right cool. bye, bye.